I am here with the one, the only, the fucking guy that puts on more shows and stays busier than anybody I've fucking ever met. In this game so far, Noah Shark Robertson. Woo! Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Love that guy. Hell yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, brother? Uh, I've just been hanging out today. Um, yeah. I was working on a flyer for a show. Funny you bring that up. I was working on a show flyer right before you got here for a St. Patrick's Day show. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. That's going to be a badass show, isn't it? Yeah, dude. Um, you're on that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we're doing a St. Patrick's Day show at Reno's, and uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, of course, you know, paying tribute to Zach Sprung. Yeah. Uh, who passed away. That was He was actually supposed to be on that show. Yeah. So, you know, I figured I would turn it into like a little tribute to him. But yeah, that'll be a great show. Yeah, man, it's it's definitely an honor to to be on that show, especially with you know, the comedian Zach Sprung was. I really didn't know him too well, uh, because I was so early getting into the game and I only met him one time. I went I went to one of his open mics at Canucks. Mm -hmm. And um uh, man, he just he had a all around good vibe, you know? Yeah, he was a yeah. cool dude. Yeah. And that, that's why me and him got along is cause he was a workhorse too, man. He booked a lot of shows. And he was constantly getting people up. Yeah. So many people got their first show from him. Yeah. And um, it's cool to be kind of like, I don't want to say I'm taking his place or anything like that, uh, but it's cool to be able to like do that mm. uh, for people now that he's kind of gone and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I've gotten a lot of people their very first book show. Yeah. So, uh, Let me ask you this. Just keep going. What, what got you interested because you're a man of many traits, you got a lot of different. You've you've been in the music industry. You've now you're dab, you're doing comedy. Like what what got you interested in the the creative mindset? Does that make sense? Uh, what got me interested in like doing like, creative things? Yeah, creative. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't know. That's a great question. Uh, ever so, I've always been kind of a. I call it being a hyper creative. Mm. I've always been that way ever since I was a little kid. Um, I've always, when I was a little kid, I was like making games for all the neighborhood kids to play like board games and stuff. And then I started making like little cartoon flip books. Um, <clears throat> and it was like everything that I did that was creative was always, um, designed to like either help somebody or yeah. affect somebody in a certain way or entertain somebody. So, um, I don't know. That's, that's interesting. You're a natural entertainer. I, I, yeah, I've always been a natural entertainer, I think. And then I joined the school band yeah. and I, and I, at that moment I was like, okay, this is where I want to be. You know, uh, I can like entertain people and put on shows and yeah, it just like snowballed from there. I did, you know, theater in high school and stuff like that. Oh yeah. So you were in theater in high school, huh? It was an accident. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was an accident. Why was it an accident? Uh, I took us, so I took a speech class. Uh, and in the speech class, the, uh, instructor had us make a commercial mm. and I guess when she saw my commercial, she was like, you know what? You, you kind of like have some acting skills. You should be in, you should join theater. She had me try out and she gave me the lead role Hell and I yeah. was like, I never thought I would do acting. She saw the potential, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> another kind of crazy thing that got me into acting, uh, my mom took my th I have three little brothers, three mm -hmm. half brothers. My mom drove all the way to, from Dal uh, from where we live to Dallas, which is like a three, four hour drive. Mm -hmm. And she thought she was going to get them into modeling. She wanted my brothers to be models. And uh, <laughs> she took them to this place called John Robert Powers Entertainment Company, which is basically a huge scam mm -hmm. that I've learned uh, as an adult. But uh, they basically all three got turned down because they didn't want to do it. Yeah. And the casting director guy was like, well, they don't even want to do this. Like, so... <laughs> And then uh, he was like, all right, well, we'll see you guys later. And uh, she was like, well, I have another son that's out there. You know, I'm not really model type, but she was like, <laughs> you know, maybe he could do like. Depends on who you ask now. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, it is 2023. Uh, yeah. But uh, I went in there. You're and a pretty like, damn good looking shark if you, if you ask me. Oh, hell yeah. Mm, thank you. <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, she took, I, I went in there and read like a script that they gave me. And yeah. uh, they were like, you know what? You have potential. And so. Dude, she started driving me to Dallas from the middle of nowhere, Texas, three hours every weekend to take uh, improv and acting lessons and stuff. Mm. And um, yeah, it was weird. I, I I was kind of in my shell, though, at that time yeah. in life. I didn't start really coming out of my shell until a little bit later in life. But um, I wish I could go back and redo it. I feel like I could like actually commit to shit now. Oh, shit, man. You're doing it now, dude. Yeah. You're fucking killing it now, man. Your stand-up is funny, especially your goth 
bits, dude. The goth chick bits. Holy shit, bro. Oh, so lame. Dude, I, I like, love it, man. I, like I love it, dude. It's like, pun, it's like puns. <laughs> nah, like dude, it's perfect. It's perfect. Because nobody really talks shit about goth chicks. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they need to, man. They need to, bro. You record all your sets? <laughs> Uh, I don't record all of them, but uh, I record a few. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, sometimes I forget, but yeah. I've recorded a lot of them. Yeah. I've learned a lot from recording my own sets because I go back and I watch them and I, yeah. I'm my biggest fucking um, critique. So if I see yeah. something I'm doing, like I, I, at the beginning, I kept putting my hand in and out of my pocket. And I was like, what am I doing? Why do I keep grabbing my fucking. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, so I was like, Let me, I need to quit doing that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't be the hand in and out of pocket guy. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm. I'm very. Uh, I'm very stickler when it comes to my stuff. Like, yeah. That's I get. I get really like I'll create like a really good like real. Or I'll think it's really good real, and I'll replay it. It'll be just one re. I'll be doing shit in the house, and you'll just hear that bit <laughs> that real yeah. going back and back to back to back. Dude, it's <laughs> it's it's almost wild. I'm just like, dude, I need to quit like obsessing over my shit. Do you obsess over your your art, or do you are you more like I'm just going to release it, and if it catches wind, it catches wind. If it don't, it don't. Well, okay. First of all, to, to the point you just made, uh, I was watching uh, a filmed set of mine recently mm. and noticed that I was just aimlessly wandering around the entire stage, and mm. uh, I thought to myself, I need to like, it's you know, it's called stand up, not like you know, wander <laughs> around the stage up. Like, I need to like chill and like just stand there. <laughs> Because I've seen some of the funniest comics I've seen are just standing there. Yeah, they're not doing shit. Yeah, and um, I don't know. I, I'm I've always been kind of a I, I can't sit still, and I wander and I pace. So like I need to fucking knock that off. Yeah. But um, you're asking if I like obsess over my stuff. Yeah. Y you know what? Um. Yeah. That's good. I'm. That makes you better. That means you're hungry and you want your shit to be better. That's what I think. I think when you're obsessing yeah. over it, you're you're. You're critiquing it because you know it's people are other people are going to see this. So right. you're like, I want this to be the best version that they see. I want this to be the finished product to be perfect. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that, man. Totally. But sometimes it can be annoying. <laughs> My wife, she'll be like, she'll be like, "Hey, I'm tired of hearing that same song over and over again. That little five minute or five second clip over." I'm like, "I'm yeah. sorry, babe. I don't. I forget that it, it like it'll just be sitting there going over and over again. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm just yeah, yeah." yeah. I, I'm I'm definitely a perfectionist, and um, some of my habits from like my music career have carried over to comedy. Like I, I practice for hours and hours a day yeah. for to do music, so I've kind of have a good work ethic when it comes to that. But it, with comedy, I do have a bad habit of being like over prepared and um, really like what what I've been focusing on lately is um, trying to riff mm. and just wing it yeah. and uh, be unprepared and like uh, I've been trying to uh, improv and like interact with the crowd do crowd work because yeah. i feel that's like a weak point in my stuff crowd work is so hard isn't it it can be i think if you think too yeah. much about it it's hard yeah definitely yeah for me it's for me it's still at a point where i'm still trying to get comfortable super comfortable on stage so i think once i get them that 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 anxiety is gone mm -hmm. then i'll be able to do crowd crowd work but for right now i'm just like let me just do my material well it's interesting that you say it's hard because I, I think that's only true like at the beginning. Mm. I think once you got it, it becomes incredibly easy, mm. which is why a lot of comedians say when dudes only do crowd work, they kind of talk shit. And they're like, oh, well, that, that guy relies heavily on crowd work. He doesn't actually do, you know. Um, but I've been, I've been reading a lot of stuff about crowd work. I've been watching a lot of crowd work um, specials. Yeah. And I've just been researching the shit out of it. And uh, one of the best tips that I got that I, that I want to pass along to you is, because this really helped me, in the early stages of me trying to do crowd work, mm -hmm. I thought that like any little tidbit that came from the audience, I had to try to make funny. And that's why I was struggling with it so much, because I thought, oh man, some th sometimes things are like, you just can't think of anything, or you, you talk to an audience member that's not giving you shit, they're boring. Yeah. Um, I've I've heard from several like pro comics that it's like totally okay to mine and surf the audience for stuff. And if somebody's not giving you anything or if somebody says something dumb, you can totally just like pass them on. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's actually kind of funny when you do sometimes. Yeah. You know, if you're like, ah, never mind that guy, you know what I mean? Like you, you don't can have make to, a funny comment. Yeah. yeah you don't that have to, like, that guy's them, not exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but you yeah, could just yeah. like kind of like move past that. Like, no, no, I, I don't know what to do with that. And you can just, and that, that's helped me a lot. Um, yeah. So before you got into comedy, you, you're a musician, and you, I, you still do music, I imagine. Yeah, I still do um, what, music. What's uh, tell me, is it the same rush 
when you got like when you're up there getting a bit and your and your bits are going good and you're getting a laugh when you're doing music is it the same kind of rush you get when somebody's listening to your music and you know they're they're their heads nodding and they're dancing on the floor is it the same rush or is it different hmm that's it that's a good question i don't i've never been asked anything like that um it's definitely in the same wheelhouse yeah like i i definitely get like a a rush and um i think i am somebody that like wants to be liked and accepted and uh i like making other people happy i like Mm. doing stuff for other people so like i do get all those feelings from it but it it is different i'm just curious i'm curious how how it's different exactly um Hmm, that's a good question. I have to yeah. I have to really think about that. But well, it is very similar. I've talked to I've song. talked to another guy that did also musical and, and and comedy. He said that for him, it's a little different because when you do comedy, most people are there just to laugh, you know. And when you right. do music, sometimes and people aren't there to you know have a good time. They're but they're but music is more for like people that have like a they're trying to serenade their soul, you know. Yeah. Like you're they're, you're trying they're trying to like escape. In a, weird, mm-hmm. in a way and you know people get lost in music and all that i was like oh that's an interesting take so I, I guess i guess i guess that could be the difference i don't know i've never been a musician i've always thought about doing it i thought yeah but i can't play a fucking instrument man if i could i would yeah how many instruments do you play uh i play uh drums as my main Hell yeah. i've been doing percussion those, a long those time. look like they're the, the badass to play yeah it's yeah. it's a lot of fun it takes a lot of coordination it's like running a marathon sometimes especially when you're doing heavy metal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh but i play guitar i've been playing guitar a long time i teach guitar and drums and uh you i get do, all the pussy man playing i do that guitar. keyboards go with oh, them, yeah, i know right go with them fingers dude <laughs> Hell yeah yeah that'd I be do. my pickup line if i play guitar and baby i play guitar so i'm just saying <laughs> i'm just saying yeah uh yeah totally i i do piano um you know i sing a little bit a little bit of everything i do yeah. some bass guitar and stuff but i can't play no horn instruments i i ain't blowing nothing you know you ever thought about bringing a car- guitar on stage with your stand-up yes you Ooh. know what i'm really glad you brought that up Ooh. i'm very glad you brought that up um because i feel like that's where all this is leading Mm. I had a I had a revelation recently where I was like, you know what? I, I really need to combine these two things. I um I I have been working for the past couple of years on getting really good at playing and singing guitar. Yeah. And um I change lyrics a lot. I, I do parody songs all the time. So I'm like I it's but I don't know how to I don't know how to put this into words exactly, but I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I haven't really built up the nerve to actually do that yeah to have have those two worlds combined i'm not sure why but i'm sure i'm sure that as soon as i start it i'll like feel better kind of like the first time you do stand up yeah i was terrified the first time and then when i got that first one over with it was like all right this you know so let me ask you how do you deal with the nerves of being on stage and doing stand up because you know some people they handle the nerves good and then some people tell me the nerves help them me i'm like the nerves fuck me as soon as i get nervous i go blank Right. And then I don't, it's like I lose train of thought. Like I'm, I'm like, what am I doing up here? You know? Yeah. So it's like, I have to, I have to go up there feeling not nervous or yeah. if I do get nervous, flip it or something. I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's how, weird. For how me. long have you been doing stand up? Uh, four years or four, sorry, four months, not four years, four months, four months. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What I can tell you is when I first started doing it, uh, for like the whole first six months to a year even though i did have a head start because i've been on stage my whole life Mm -hmm. um i was always in my head always super nervous always felt terrified until the moment i had to like step on stage and like that really does start to go away and uh i am so thankful that it does go away because like i always felt like i couldn't be in the moment and just flow Mm -hmm. and like um instead of like reacting to the audience or like adjusting things for the room i was like just all in here you know just like oh like you know and um now i'm able to be like more of myself they say it takes like 10 years to you know what i mean it takes like yeah between five and ten years to get like pretty good and uh now i'm like four years in and i'm starting to get comfortable to the point well, your where, like, spe- your stage presence myself. is really good like I, I can tell you that every time i've seen you go up Interesting. You're, you're very i mean that's good that's just from my <laughs> perspective you you carry the you you 
you work the stage very good as a as a performer. Um, now, I especially just need to work this, on my jokes. Especially this, no, no, especially <laughs> no, no. You got Seriously. funny material, uh, especially like at Canucks. Like I was, I mean, I was like, dude, this dude right here, he he's, he owns the stage. Like you were telling me that you kind of were just free for free, you know, free for all that night. Yeah, and you fucking, I, I thought you. I mean, it seemed like you had prepared. I was proud that of that set. one. Yeah, that was, was really a good set. That, that was a really good set. Because I was making a conscious effort to like just try to talk to people, crowd work, you know, just like. Yeah relax and then like it actually worked out pretty good i was i was really proud of that one yeah, yeah. i filmed that one too so i'm gonna watch it and yeah i remember the dude was like this dude's feeling it. like what do you do cares man like he would you didn't even have your camera on it oh, was yeah. just pointed in that direction he the, thought you were filming <laughs> yeah the comic right before me was yeah. like we will say his day but yeah dude I, freaking out some people man some people do you ever get have you ever had like a weird vibe you know from some of these open mics you come in contact with a lot of people have you ever had like somebody like give you a vibe and you're you don't have to name their name but you got any stories where you're like dude i got to tell this guy to leave or you yeah know? i have some yeah. really good stories i can tell about that <laughs> if you want to hear them. yeah we don't need to name names though yeah we'll, we'll keep names out and they're not long stories i'm not really i'm not really much of a storyteller <laughs> but i'll tell you so the first thing that uh the first thing that happened that I can kind of think of off the top of my head is a guy came to the front of the stage yeah. and punched me in the balls. Holy shit. For no reason. It wasn't like I was roasting him or that I said something Did like, you know him? that offended him. No, random wow. guy. He walks to the front of the stage. There's a video of it on YouTube. If you look up like my YouTube and type in comedian gets attacked on stage or something. And uh, by the way, I only changed I only changed that title after the Chris Rock thing cuz I was like <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm going viral. Hell you know? yeah. But no, he he just walked up and punched me right in the and I had my uh, I had one of my legs up on the monitor so my pants were stretched out. Yeah. So like it kind of rebounded off that. But um I say to the guy, I was like, "You know what, man? You're really brave because I'm a big dude and I'm pretty sure I could kick your ass." Also, He's like face kicking level. I'm on stage. He's yeah. like, I could have just fucked him up. But uh, he got kicked out. Security escorted him out. And well, see, the thing is, you're such a dude. You're a cool fucking dude. You wouldn't have had to fuck him up. Somebody else would have. You know what I mean? So? Oh, I think so for sure. Oof. For sure. Yeah, he was like hitting on all the chicks there aggressively. He hit on my girlfriend. And then uh, there was like a 17 year old chick there and he was hitting <sighs> on her. And like, it was just like, dude, we got to get this guy the fuck out of here. But have you heard the George Lopez story? Uh, yeah what do you what's your thoughts on that <laughs> no not george no not george lopez not actually george lopez. oh okay I was reno's to... george lopez no i haven't not heard that. okay this is the okay this is the only other story i'll tell you uh as far as like weird comedians but uh so we had a guy in the audience drunk mm -hmm. and i start like uh talking to him i'm on stage and i'm like hey man uh if you think you're so funny and you want to talk so much you should get up here and try a stand-up so he was like all right he gets on stage he tries to do stand up. He bombs hard. He, when he right when he gets off stage, he tries to steal a bottle of liquor from the bar. Oh my god! The owner, um, Steve, the owner of Reno's, confronts him. The George Lopez guy pulls out a knife. <laughs> Holy shit! They get into a physical altercation, and uh, Steve ends up getting his throat slashed by, by this guy. Yeah. Not like slash to the point where like he's gonna die, but like he's bleeding and he's yeah. cut. Uh, a bunch of people grab the guy, throw him on the ground, kind of beat him up a little bit. The cops come, arrest him. But yeah, some dude named George fucking Lopez uh, caused the scene at Reno's uh, at the open shit, mic. Man, that's crazy. Man. God damn! And another George Lopez causing the scene. Yeah, <laughs> we will talk about that though. And you know what? That that doesn't even really fit into your question because yeah. like I didn't. Nobody, he was a regular there. Yeah. Nobody got a weird vibe from him until that moment. He yeah. just decided to snap one day, you know? Yeah. Maybe it was him bombing that caused him to. <laughs> so he was a, so he was a, like a kind of a comedian type, type, wasn't he? No, not at no, all. No, I just he... convinced him to try a stand up, I guess. Maybe yeah. he always wanted to try because it yeah. seemed like he did have some stuff worked out in his head. But there was another guy, a white dude that was kind of creeping us all out. And he got up on stage and uh, was trying to do comedy. And he said the N word. <sighs> and uh, everyone was like, oh, hell no. Nah. And then when he got off stage, he started yelling at everyone in the venue that he was going to come back with a gun and kill us. I remember you saying something about and that. we were like, what? I do remember you. That was recent, wasn't it? Uh, that was a few That was a few months ago. A few months ago? Yeah, that was a few months ago. But um, Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe. There's maybe some weirdos. Yeah, that is crazy, man. That's wild. And, and yeah, to, to add to like your point, like sometimes you are talking with people and you can get a sense that uh, like 
really kind of down to earth and genuine yeah. and like cool dudes. And then some people you could tell they're in trying to get into comedy for like the, the wrong, wrong reasons. reasons. Like yeah. they just are super narcissistic or, um, yeah, I don't know. But a lot of comedians are kind of fucked up people. A yeah, bit. A lot. We're all fucked up. You know, dude. we're all fucked up. For us <laughs> yeah. to get on stage and do what we do, we're a little fucked up for yeah. sure. For sure. Totally. Yeah. It takes it, a special type, right? So how long have you been actually doing stand up? So, so I started in 2018. Okay. Technically four years, but mm-hmm. when the pandemic happened, I didn't do it for a year straight. Yeah. And I got, you know, what's weird about stand up. Um, I got, I, I was starting from ground zero. It felt like, yeah. you know, after doing it for a year or after not doing it for a year, I literally felt like, how do, how am I going to get on stage ever again? I, I felt terrified to get up and tell even was one it? joke. Yeah. yeah, I had uh, to slowly work it back up. When you're creating like material for your for your stand up, is there like a certain routine? Is there like a mindset you need to be in? Like, let's say like when you're coming up with these goth jo- like these goth girl jokes, I, I noticed you said you like to go to the church, the mm-hmm. the, the place here in D- yeah. DFW. Is it so? Do you like to be in the atmosphere of of material, or how do you how do you come up with material? That's a great question. First, I just want to say this because this has been on my mind today. Yeah, go ahead. Um, with the goth girl jokes, I, and I hate when this happens. So, so every once in a while, I'll, I'll think of a joke, like a pun, yeah. and it's so obvious and such low hanging fruit that I'll I'll Google it, right? And I'll yeah. say, like, are people saying this, or am I a genius? Uh, a couple of those goth girl jokes are on the internet, and I'm it pissed me off because uh, I'm like, dude, don't pay attention. To I'm that. like, dude, I'm a genius, and then uh, I look up on the internet and like, Goth Brooks is a thing. You know, somebody has <laughs> thought of Goth Brooks before. I guess yeah. if you kind of make it your own and you do like your own yeah. like structured bit about it, it's cool. But I don't know. Sometimes it uh, makes me want to just not do those jokes. I know, but, I know. But man, eh, I, 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 I write material. I write material, and I don't even Google the shit if it's yeah. it, hope because I don't. I, I, it comes from a genuine place. Yeah, you know. Now if I'm now if I'm I have had a few jokes that I because I used to work at a bar as a bartender, mm-hmm. and these patrons will be like, "Man, you got to try this joke. I've heard this from a buddy of mine." And, and I'll be all right. So I'd listen to it, and I'd be like, "Man, this is a good joke." So I had a joke where where I would say, "Well, this gay guy stayed not at my house or not." you know he crashed in my place slip in the living room and uh i come in in the morning and he's in the fucking my my kitchen jerking off into a plastic bag i said man what the fuck are you doing he said i'm making i'm packing your lunch it's a funny <laughs> joke you know but i was what? like but exactly and i was like i was like dude that's hilarious so i said it on stage and i made a clip and everything and then i was like man i heard that at the bar i said yeah. i didn't come up with that let me google that real quick I fucking it was a joke and i was like mm. ah. i was like all right so i took the, i deleted the clip i took it, the joke out but it was a joke i overheard from another person but if i wrote the damn joke down if it's something that i wrote down and then somebody comes to me i'm like hey man i saw that on a real i wrote it down it's in my joke book yeah I, it's right here you can see where i scratched this word out and i was like no this is i'm gonna use this word instead of yeah. I came up with it, and my, you know, even though it might have been somebody else said it, I didn't know they said it. Hell, I fucking came up with it, you know, right here. It's in my joke book. Look, that's a lot <laughs> I mean, more prevalent now because yeah. of TikTok yeah. and everything. I had a guy tell me uh, when I got off stage one day, oh, dude, I saw that joke on TikTok, and I was like, what? I hate that shit. I was like, what? <laughs> Are you sure? Was it my real? <laughs> that's weird. Uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, you know, I, I f- those are haters too. But you got to remember, you got haters out there too that'll try to yeah. discredit what you do. Yeah. What well, What works personally best for me is when, when a funny idea comes to my head, like when I genuinely think something is kind of funny, I'll, I'll, uh, I have this document in Google on mm. my, uh, that I have access to on my phone. I'll just write like a little couple words so that I can remember that thought. And then, um, and then later I'll take that little idea and I'll like refine it and I'll actually like make a joke out of it. Yeah. But if I try to sit down and say, okay, I'm going to write some funny stuff right now. Um, it's a little bit more of a challenge for me to just like sit down and write versus like I'm at the grocery store and something's funny to me or, you know what I mean? So like stuff actually happening to me or like, you know, stuff that's actually going on in my life. I can write like a lot funnier stuff about it, I think, or, you know, what I think is funny versus just like sitting down and being like, okay, I'm going to be funny right now. You know what I mean? It's gotta be like natural. Do you do a lot of editing on stage? What do you mean? Like, let's say you wrote down a, a, a joke a certain way, and then you get on stage. Do you ever add, like, if you, like, in the moment, like, yeah. you know what, I'm going to do this, and then, like, done something in the moment that got a big pop, and it was like, let yeah. me go back and write that down. Yeah, I yeah. love that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel like, 
I mean, I would never say this to another human being, but to me, you know, in my mind, I'm like, dude, I'm a genius. You know, like, oh, yeah. man, I can't believe I did that. Dude, there's nothing wrong with that. But you know what I'm saying? I know what like, you're saying. I get proud of myself because I'm like, dude, I just made that joke actually awesome by like adding that little tag. Um, or, or sometimes you'll mess up and say a joke a, a different way than you didn't anticipate and it'll get a, la- a laugh, yeah, a big laugh, laugh yeah. Yeah. but yeah. i do that a lot yeah i try to i try to edit as much as i can yeah that's why i think it's really important to to record every time you go up because yeah. you might say a joke different every time or you know a little add a little something there or add a little something there and somebody says you know you get a big pop where you're like oh i didn't even you know maybe i should say it this it. way <laughs> yeah you might forget it or something but yeah, yeah. I definitely i definitely am a huge believer of of recording every every set i do that's good that's yeah. smart yeah. yeah i i i should be more diligent with that and uh i just had a um but hell you got so much going on i just booked um mitch burrow yeah yeah um, he's a monster he's he's hilarious he's really good but um he, we we did like a meet and greet thing with him uh at dallas comedy club before our show and um I, he was just talking to us about like what we should do and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and two, two of the things that he kind of reiterated, I, it's not stuff I haven't heard before, but it's like, it got me wanting to do it again. He said, write every day, which I slack sometimes and I don't yeah. write. He was like, write every day. And the best time is like, right when you wake up. Um, and then he was like, record every set, you know, he like mm-hmm. brought that up again. And I was like, you know what, man, I've been slacking on that. You know, yeah. I need to do that. Even, Even if you, if think you don't redundant. ride every day, cause I don't ride every day either, which yeah. I should, but I mean, he's a professional. He's, you know, he's yeah. obviously a guy that, that sells out, you know, venues and stuff like that. Um, but I should, we, I should probably should ride every day, but man, it's just, so, I got, you know, being in this game for four months, I just need to get my bits memorized. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got to get, I don't want to go blank on stage. That's the totally. biggest thing. So if I ride every day, if I got new material every day, then that's more for me to memorize. You know what I yeah. mean? So it's like, I, I, what I've been doing is I'll reconstruct my bits. After I talked to Theban G, cause you know, he's an engineer and all that. He's like, bro, he's like, your jokes are funny. You just need to restructure them. Like, and move this punchline here move that so now oh, yeah. when i write a joke i go back and i'm like maybe i should move this here move that there you know and set it up a little different yeah so that's that's been some stuff i've been working on but i really do think that comedy is as a whole it's really fun man it's really cool it's it, awesome it's I love awesome it. and yeah. and you're because you're the instrument that people come like you're you're your mouth what you're it's just you on stage yeah and you're just trying to make people laugh it's really intimidating really if you think about it it was hard it was, dude, it was hard for me to memorize <laughs> yeah. stuff uh in the beginning um w- one thing that's helped me with that is like actually doing stuff that i actually can get behind and actually yeah. think and I, like i might have been doing some like cheesy stuff that i actually didn't full-heartedly think or agree with i don't know i don't know how to explain that fully but when you actually talk about stuff that like you feel strongly about it's much easier to just be in the moment and flow on it as opposed to like memorizing some lines that i wrote you know what i mean yeah um do you ever make like little hymns like oh, with your jokes like sing your jokes so they get sticking no no dude, no, i do that shit you know how like like they have that called <laughs> jg wentworth or you know yeah, all yeah, that yeah. Shit. I'll, I'll like sing bits in my head oh wow just so that they'll stick but that's still man it's still i still have a hard time with it <laughs> women be shopping <laughs> Gotta remember that one. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sound like a crazy person right that's now. How, that's a good idea, though. I, I, my mom taught me a little uh, song. Uh, see, with the guitar, man, you just start picking up your guitar, start singing these bits, dude, you're going to fucking kill, bro. I know, I'm right? telling you, man. I should. Uh, my mom taught me a song to remember how to spell my last name when I was a kid. It was like R-O-B-E-R-T-S-O-N. Hell yeah. So, yeah, that might, you know, that might work. Um, yeah, I used to have trouble with that, man. As a matter of fact, dude, one of the one of the most terrifying things um, that I almost happened to me and I avoided. Luckily, yeah. I was v- okay. So when I first started doing stand up, mm-hmm. I did uh, I booked myself uh, a string of open mic. I, so I started in Hollywood, L.A. Yeah. area, like yeah. Santa Barbara, like California area. I booked myself a open mic like a bunch of nights all in a row, and it kind of looked like a tour, right? Ooh. So I made a tour flyer. And it looked like, and I and I called it the I have no idea what I'm doing tour, but it was kind of a joke. It was like me like, oh, like and like I have no idea what I'm doing. And it looked like <laughs> I was doing all these dates. I didn't say they were open mics. It just you know, but um, 
my second, third, or fourth week in of to doing comedy, I used that tour flyer to get at, in at the comedy store. Uh, I I found this promoter guy that was doing a lot of shows, and I like talked myself up, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm an entertainer. I've been doing it for 20 years. Here, there's my latest tour, <laughs> and uh, I got a show at the comedy store." <laughs> I'm an idiot. I don't know why I did that, but I was just like gung ho, and I was like, "Yeah, I can do this." Plus, plus, because of all my stuff I've done with record labels and like the music business, I'm very good at selling myself, marketing. Yeah. So I got myself in at the comedy store, right? When he was about to call my name, dude, I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. And uh, <laughs> when I got on stage, I was like two jokes in, and I blank minded hard. Oh shit! Like it was one of those moments. It was like sink or swim. Yeah. The audience is staring at me. I'm just standing there. I'm starting to sweat, and uh, I just remember it feeling like it lasted for like eternity but it was only a couple seconds yeah. it was only a couple seconds but i had an inner dialogue i was like you know what you could run off the stage right now uh like crying pretty much and never do comedy again or you can fucking like finish this show hell yeah and uh it was like it was like reality went zzz, zzz, and I, I got back in the moment remembered my jokes i i actually did i i did i think i did pretty good like hell i have yeah. a recording of it and uh I, I was getting laughs and stuff, but there was that moment when, like, I could have just failed and, like, yeah. you know. But uh, I don't know why I did that. I was like, I'm at the comedy store. And I'm, like, been doing comedy for, like, three weeks. What am I doing? I think it's funny when, Packed like, audience. I think it's funny. That, that's, that's a cool story, though. And, you, you know, <laughs> that, no, that's badass. You, you, How many comedians can say they fucking performed at the comedy store? Seriously. Uh, I, I mean. I was very lucky to that's be That's badass. Yeah. That's kind of a, I, that's kind of a bucket list thing for some people, you know. Yeah, and then yeah. I got on at the comedy store in the main room because I did Kill Tony oh, in Hollywood, yeah, and that was crazy. Yeah. Ba- yeah. Battle how was that? How was that? Ex- how was that experience? Uh, that was good. When I go back and look at it, though, you can see how new I am. Yeah, like I still do one of those jokes today, but I'm very confident with it. Back then, it was like, man, it was like half-assed and weird. Yeah, and uh, I'm wearing shorts, which is like apparently a big no-no in comedy. You're not supposed to wear shorts. But back then, I only wore shorts. I, I was not. I, I refused to wear pants. I want to try to bring shorts back. Yeah, well, Fuck yeah. I wish I could too. I wore shorts uh, Monday night at the arena. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start Do wearing it. shorts. Fuck yeah, I wear a kilt. Fucking oh not, yeah, I've man. seen you wear a kilt. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it, why not? Yeah, well, some there's a large demographic of the comedy uh, scene that thinks like people that, got these fucking rules. There ain't that. no fucking rules in comedy. I don't, I don't really care, but. Yeah. I, I think that you do look a little bit more professional. Obviously, oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. If you're doing a show, you should probably yeah. wear shit pants. I was wearing shorts, and I had a wallet chain, and, like, uh, they were roasting me because I said <laughs> yeah. a couple really dumb things. <laughs> it, it sounded dumb. Because what I did, it was Shark Week. Yeah. Okay? It was Shark Week. It was my birthday week. Uh, and I'm living it up. I'm like, man, I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do comedy every night of Shark Week. That was a personal goal of mine. It wasn't yeah. like I was telling people that, like. You know that, but I said it on stage to them, and one of the guests on the show just ripped me apart and started roasting me. He was like, "Dude, that's like the dumbest shit I've ever heard." He was like, "What a <laughs> shitty goal! I'm gonna do comedy every night of Shark Week." But um, my comedy, you know, it was shaky. I didn't. They didn't rip me apart for it or anything. Like they didn't talk shit. I kind of deflected the comedy away from the conversation and tried to drive it more towards like my drumming. Yeah, because I, I wanted them to think I was cool. I didn't want them to like roast me and like you know how Kill Tony <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah. You got to be interesting. They're mean, or they'll fuck your ass yeah, up. So mean. I was like, I'm a professional musician. I've been doing it 20 years. I'm a drummer. And then to kill, you know, Tony. He's like, oh, drum off, and like they made me battle the drummer. He's naked with a sock on his crotch, hovering above me on a stool like a gargoyle. <laughs> And like it was crazy. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's badass, dude. That's an experience, man. Yeah, it was that's cool, cool, it was cool, man. And this is back in L.A. That was in that was in uh, yeah Hollywood at the world famous comedy store and um, you know what I I've never said this to anybody but I have a personal grievance so the lore in the Kill Tony uh, world is no one's ever beat the drummer in a drum off yeah if you watch that video you kicked his ass well they they have an audience vote. Yeah. The audience cheered for me way bigger than they did for him. And he kind of, kind of got mad and he wanted a rematch, which has never happened to, to, on any drum off. He was like, no, 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 rematch. Whenever I go to do the second uh, go around, the stick flies out of my hand and I, and I lose. T- Tony's like, nope, you lose. And I was like, no. I was like, I wished I could have actually like won, you know. But uh, what I've been doing lately is I've been studying the new drummer's 
drum solos. Yeah. And I am purposely engineering. I'm not kidding. I've been purposely engineering behind the scenes a drum solo that I know will beat that motherfucker. Hell ass. yeah. Like I'm talking about stick spins. I'm juggling while I'm playing. Oh, I'm going to yeah. chug a beer. Like he's not, I'm not. Because you know what they say, if you beat the drummer on Kill Tony, you're the yeah, new drummer, right? You are, yeah. I'm going to make that happen, dude. dude I'm going to be, be the dope. first guy to beat him. That'd be fucking badass. I think man. I can. Unless he steps up and pulls out some shit that, like, you know what he I mean? He ain't going to pull that off. Because he ain't used to that. No, nah, he, he doesn't do that, that stuff. But yeah. it's not really about, I don't know. It, he He's really good. Don't get me wrong. He's very good. But I think maybe I can, like, surprise him. Because, you know, I'm not, like, I don't suck. I've been playing, like, 25 years. But I don't suck. I've just been playing Michael's my good. whole lot, half my life. Michael's you know? Michael's very good. He's a great drummer. So so is Joel, but he, Joel is nothing compared to Michael. Michael's yeah. an actual drummer. Drummer. Yeah. Joel's just kind of like a guy that like kind of got good at drums on the side or something. I feel like. But anyway, I, I respect every musician. Everybody's yeah. got something to offer. But I would like to win. Are you in a band Kick now? Ass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just quit a band. Um. I was in a band called The Tragedy at Hand for a while, but um, I'm no longer with them. Um, right now, I'm in a band called Jeffrey Nothing. Okay. Uh, he was the lead singer of Mushroom Head for like 25 years. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, and whenever I left the band Moto Grader, uh, we kind of formed like a little, like I guess, super group or something. Yeah. And, you know, we, we we definitely milked the shit out of that. Ex-members of Mushroom Head and Moto Grader, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then you I'm in a to. band called uh, Ninth Sphere. Yeah. Ninth Sphere. Yeah, with some buddies that I was in the Browning with uh, and Surrealism with. But, uh, yeah, I think just two bands right now. Yeah. Just out here rocking out with your cock out, man. I, I do comedy way more, though, now. Do you? Yeah, I've slowed well, down. Well, shit, you're fucking with book, you're, you're booking comedians left and right. Yeah. You got How many shows do you have lined up? The, um, just, uh, let's say within the next two months. How many shows do you have? Damn, that's a great question. Uh, well, I've got, uh, I'm doing Dallas Comedy Club, uh, coming up really soon yeah. in the next couple, like week or two. And then I've got the St. Patrick's Day show. I'm doing the, oh, I'm doing the Addison Improv for the first time Hell coming yeah. up really soon. I'm doing a Marvel show where we're all dressed up as like Marvel Oh, that's characters. pretty cool. That's really cool. Um, I've, I think y'all, y'all have done that at the comedy arena, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've yeah, been kind of yeah. touring it around and doing it at all the, and that's what's afforded me to do like all these venues I've been dying to do uh, this year. Yeah. I got to do the comedy arena because of that show. Uh, by the way, shout out to Joshua Stromiello. Okay. The mastermind behind the Marvel shows. Uh, because of him, I got to do comedy arena, Addison Improv. Is he the guest that was there last night? Um, Plain, Plain Ohio House of Comedy we did. Yeah. yeah, yeah Josh that, was the guy yeah, that was here last night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, fu he's a funny dude. I like that yeah. guy. Yeah. He was, he was funny, man. He, 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 you can definitely tell he's been doing it a long time, too. Yeah. Oh, I, I want to say, say this real quick before I forget. Yeah, um, go ahead. I feel like this mic is like going down or something, but eh, it, it'll work. Um, all right, so we were talking about like the music and comedy thing. Yeah. I got to tell you a quick story. So I was in a band called Moto Grader. Okay. Have you ever heard of that band? Uh-uh. So Moto Grader, I, I was a huge fan of this band. Uh, they were on the, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre soundtrack. They were on Ozfest. I was a huge fan. I had their posters on my wall, yeah. and so I already I, I knew how to play their songs backwards and forwards. But when I joined the band, it was like a huge honor. I was like, dude, this is awesome. Like I'm a huge fan. Now I'm in the band. Um, the lead singer from Motor Grader, he's now the lead singer of Five Finger Death Punch. Oh hell yeah, uh, Ivan Moody. Um, but it, but anyway. So I, I helped resurrect the band. I joined the band. I helped them get it going again. I helped, I helped us get management, um, a booking agent. I got assigned. I helped uh, us release our second album. Like I, I did a bunch of stuff for the band. We, were, we had finally released our album. We're on a nationwide tour, 76 dates in a row to promote our album. We had like a week left in the tour. Mm -hmm. I, got into a, I got into an argument with uh, the leads, I mean with the guitar player. Yeah. And they left me stranded in Omaha, Nebraska. Are you fucking kidding me? And they took off with my drums to the next show. I had to rent a car and like chase them down, try to get my drums back. But um, so I had to ship my drums from Omaha, Nebraska back to California. God damn. I had to take a train all the way home. It was a nightmare. Yeah. It, it was a big falling out and it was horrible. And it even went public. We started like talking shit about each other in, yeah. the, in the media. And then they sent me from a lawyer a cease and desist saying, like, you, you know, you can't talk about Motor Girl anymore. It was horrible. Um, yeah, it was. It got bad. They, they launched a... Um, so I controlled the website. Yeah. And they launched a... 
like a social media campaign asking their fans what their new URL should be. I bought both of those URLs. And whenever, yeah. So I was, we were fucking with each other bad. But um, <laughs> the, the only reason why I'm bringing that up is because I've, I've, uh, I've kind of been put through the ringer, so to speak, when it comes to the music industry. Yeah. Like I've had a lot of really crazy bad. Basically, the music industry chewed me up and spit me out. Yeah. So it's hard. Yeah, the music industry because you're relying on so many different people too. Well, that's exactly yeah. the point I'm about to make. Yeah. Is that's was the final straw that got me into comedy. Yeah, um, I'm sitting there in California. I don't have a band anymore. I'm kind of angry at the music industry and the and the people that I was like having to rely on to be in a band. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try to just be an entertainer uh, and only have me myself and I. Yeah. So I went and did an open mic. And that's when I felt I've always wanted to do comedy, but that was what pushed me to like actually try it is like not wanting to have any dead weight and just yeah. be me in a mic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I've been lugging my drums around the freaking world forever. And like, it's a nightmare. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to just have a mic now and it's just going to be me. No, that you got to get a label. Yeah. You got to get it. I mean, I'm sure even the comedians got to get a manager. I think it's smart to have a manager or somebody, you know, helping yeah. you get, you know, off the, off the floor. I haven't, I haven't looked into getting a manager yet. I don't feel like I'm at that level yet, but I definitely will when I feel like I'm ready for that. Yeah. Um, well, what, what got you wanting to do comedy? Like what pushed you to, to do it? I got tired of working. Oh yeah, that's right. We were talking about that a little bit before. This. Yeah. Yeah, man. I got tired of working. You, uh, you said you were doing like corporate stuff. I was doing corporate. This? I was worked for a manufacturing plant and uh, I'm not going to say the name of it, but I worked there for a long time and you know, I was just, it was good money, but it just drug testing and just yeah. all that stuff, man. I, I got tired of it. I got tired of them telling me I had to be here. I, I, I like to, I like to walk by the beat of my own drum. That makes sense. Like, yeah. Like, man, I was a horrible employee. I would, <laughs> I would, dude, I would, I would take long breaks. I would go uh, home and get fucked up on my breaks. You're just doing I, the lowest common denominator yeah, I just, to get by. I just, yeah, exactly. And I was, I was, I was at a place in my life where I was like, man, I'm just tired of working for these dead, these fucking companies that don't give a fuck about me, you know? Right. And I was like, I need to do something different. I never did anything creative until I quit my job. And then I started doing uh, podcasting. Podcasting was the main thing. I love podcasting. I love having conversations. I love talking. Okay, to I was going to say, that's kind of a weird answer. You're like, you're saying it like it's just like another job or something, but I was I was talking about like the creative. Yeah, yeah. See the the you, podcasting. Pod, the podcasting, podcasting was more. But podcasting was more what I was like more intrigued by when I quit my job. I was like, I'm gonna get into podcasting. I got podcasting you. is gonna be what I do. But then I was sitting there thinking, I got cool stories, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I everybody's got cool stories, you know. Right. And I, I don't really have nothing that's that's got me out there for the public to see besides podcasting. Who the fuck is this guy just with a podcast? So I, was, I need True. to do something to make me more interesting. So I like I did. I signed up for an open mic with uh, Bill King was hosting, and uh, it was the one. It was Longhorn. It was the. Do you remember that venue? The Longhorn yeah. venue. Yeah, yeah. I did that Longhorn Ice did House. You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, did, yeah. I did that with Bill King with him, him being the host, and that was my first open mic. And I was like, after I got on stage, man, I was like, whoa, this is really cool i was like, <laughs> i actually enjoy this i was like i got to, i get to kind of be free on stage and kind of just make jokes and say wild shit and just well i mean get off stage and there's no repercussions <laughs> were you a joke were you a jokester or like funny around your friends yeah or yeah clown or anything yeah, like yeah. That? I always, okay, cool. you know but i've always had like a dark sense of humor so it was that. like yeah, it was like of. people so my my sometimes my jokes are like really like damn dude like you're like, <laughs> like that's fucked up like yeah. there was a girl and I, I I hope I don't get canceled for this but it's a joke and it, and I don't and I, it's a it's a tragedy well then don't say it no I, I, <laughs> it's your podcast dude I know hey, I don't think I'll get canceled hey whatever he's about to say I do not endorse <laughs> I have nothing to do no I'm just kidding. so you know you heard about the little girl that got kidnapped by the fedex driver and it's a tragedy man she 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 got committed. i don't think i'm familiar with that yeah well i made the joke that oh man so fedex who knew fedex had a uh, late term abortions you know they approved that it was a stupid joke but it, it was something that i thought would been would have been funny but yeah that's just like a really dark statement exactly exactly dark. and then i was like yeah that's not even <laughs> i mean it's funny but it's maybe to a few people i got and you, i was yeah, like yeah. I, was, I was like i probably shouldn't use that on stage and i never have this is the first time i've ever done it you know on on live for the public to hear but i understand that my, my sense of humor can get like i can if it time passes i i like to, i try to make light out, out of every fucking thing and yeah I, I, to me it's just like you know even though it, we live in a dark horrible world 
man, it's, I don't think it would be so dark if people laugh more. You know, I right. feel I feel like if we took, you know, stereotypes and made fun of them, you know, you know, like when we go to Reno's and people make a couple, you know, black jokes or make a couple Mexican jokes or make a white joke or, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, man. You should be allowed to make jokes about other people and about yourself. Mainly about yourself. If you're going to go up there and talk shit about somebody, talk yeah. shit about yourself. You know what I mean? Talk shit about shit you've you've dealt with. Me and old, I, I look white. I look like the yeah, whitest. Yeah, you make some uh, racial jokes. Yeah, which I, I think are pretty funny. Yeah, but see, I, I look white, and uh, I'm half. I'm half, but I'm actually I'm also Hispanic too. I, I'm, I'm, I'm Hispanic descent. Yeah. So it's like when I was younger, I would get fucked with for looking white by my Mexican friends. And then my white friends would fuck with me for looking for being Mexican. So I was like, well, fuck. It's if everybody could, if it's okay for me and my buddies to do it, why can't the world fucking do it? You know, I don't know. I just, I think humor is, is the thing that people need. I think people need to fucking laugh. Yeah. You know what I was, uh, I I agree totally. I was reading an article today, uh, about Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and it kind of ties into what you're talking about, about like, so, I'm sure everyone is sick to death of this topic, but I just got to kind of bring it up. It's 2023 cancel culture. Everyone's talking about what you can and can't say. Uh, the latest thing that Joe Rogan is getting flack for is, um, he made a statement during a conversation. So somebody was getting persecuted for saying that, uh, something as simple as like Jews like to get money. Jews, Jews are, well known for like they want to they want to get money or they care about money. It was like a simple little dumb statement. Yeah. Uh, and Joe Rogan was like defending that person, saying, "Well, that's not really that bad." Saying that like Jews like to get money. That's like saying Italians like pizza. It's like it's not really that big a deal. It's like not that crazy. <laughs> but like so, some guy uh, was coming out in the media just saying like this is an outrage and like using very strong language for like such a simple statement. Yeah. You know, like uh, you know what I mean, like. Black people are good at sports. It's like almost like you're giving that you're giving them a compliment. It's true. You know what I'm saying? They are like, good. Yeah, but like yeah. that's racist. This is an outrage. You should be canceled. <laughs> you know Who what? Cares? Shut the podcast down. Yeah, dude. yeah it's Who, like, like there's nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah. Like give credit where credit. You should be due. able to joke around. Black about dudes too. got big dicks. It's yeah. true. I, I don't mean, know. It, it sucks. It. it I, I guess for if you're a white guy or if you're Asian, <laughs> but Asians I mean, are also really smart. I think we all know what like lines, we, yeah. <laughs> I think we all know like what lines you should cross and stuff. But I am one of those people that th- thinks that like I don't know me personally. There's not really any lines that can be crossed. I think everything is fair game. But I can see how some people might be like if you're gonna put something out there, yeah. you have to your response. You know, like people are gonna analyze it. They're gonna be you know they're gonna be affected by it. But you know who's coming to mind right now is uh, Gilbert Godfrey. Ooh, uh, R.I.P. Yeah. He's gone now, right? Yeah, uh, I think he passed away. He might have. He might have. But he's notorious. But he was funny. He was very funny, but he was notorious for crossing uh, that line. He on Twitter. Yeah. Like whenever, like when the Japan like tsunami happened, or in Asia somewhere there was a huge tsunami. Like a few minutes after that happened, he's on Twitter like saying crazy stuff about it. And uh, I don't know, <laughs> like. I can see how people yeah. might get upset about certain things. Ari, Ari Shafir is another one of those that, like, Dude, when a Ari's celebrity wild. dies, if you go to his Twitter immediately after the announcement, he'll have said something really, like, messed but up. But see, the thing is, you, you expect that from Ari. Yeah, you know, that's true. I, I think, and, and the thing is, Ari, if you're a comedian, you know Ari enough to know that he's joking. You know, I feel like his inner circle know that he's joking. Or they wouldn't hang out with him. You wouldn't hang out with a guy that's a fucking asshole. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't hang out with a dude that you wouldn't put him on your platform (laughs) if he was a complete fucking piece of shit. I mean, you might if he's got funny stories. But the thing is, is like, man, at the same time, it's like, there's got to be a free ground. People, that's that's part of our our constitutional right, right? Freedom of speech. Definitely. You got to have some type of, you can't just cancel somebody just because you don't like what they think or like what they say. It's different. Yeah. It's different if they're coming to you and they're, and they're asking for like an action. Like let's, you remember the January 6th rights. Let's say that they're trying to orchestrate some shit like that. Now that's different because right. now they're trying to put right. actions behind their, their, their words. But if you're just making jokes, if this is a comedy podcast, if this is a, a something that you listen to, have an open mind. Yeah, know that people they're going to get offended, but that's their fucking problem. You know, and and yeah. at the end of the day, 
the reason they're getting offended is because they just can't see the humor in it, you yeah. know? And, and I mean, how, do you help, how, do you, how do you help that person? How do you, how do you keep that person from getting offended? Well, you, I, I don't know. That's something they have to deal with. You know, I, I mean, mean, people are allowed to react and have yeah, exactly, their opinions. And exactly, exactly. But it's whenever you try to like destroy cancel. somebody's entire life. Yeah, when you try to is weird. take away their platform or or censor them completely. Now, there's been a few times where there's been you know radio radio broadcasters that said the n word. Now that's completely different. Yeah, you shouldn't be saying that word. That's not our word for us to say. You know, even if you get the black vote to say the n word, it, it's still I I, I I when I was younger. I used to say the N word all the time because I, I was a wigger. I was a wigger when I was young, mm-hmm. uh, and I was because I, I grew up listening to rap music. I mean, my parent, my mom, she had me at 15 years old, I so she she we listened to Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, fucking all that good <laughs> stuff. And then she went super super. Her, my aunt hung herself, and after my aunt hung herself, my mom got super big balls deep in the church, and not just uh. any church, Pentecostal church. So we went completely from rap to this to graphic music to now we're you know going to church and doing vacation bible school bible studies all this different shit so it's like whoa this is completely wow. new for me so i grew up like this this not believing in god kid to now i'm having to go to church all the time so i was like all right well eventually i got involved in the church and all that and you know i did all that and then they it was a whole whole thing but the thing is is i related with hip-hop culture Right. So I said the N word because I thought that that was I related yeah. with it. I was like, bro, that, that's how that's how we talk, you know. N I G. I didn't say that. I didn't say the R. You were at saying the end. it in like a disparaging. No, way. I was saying it. I was saying yeah. the A at the end. You know, I was I was saying it the way the rapper said it. Right. But as I got older, I realized me looking the way I look, I shouldn't be saying that word <laughs> because right. it's, because it's it's disrespectful, man. At the end of the day, it is a derogatory term. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like I, now I, I don't say it. Period. I don't say the word. I don't say it jokingly i try not to there's there's been a few times i'll say it jokingly you know what's up my you know with yeah. the, my black buddy but then i'll be like dude and, they, and they'll they'll laugh and they're like man you're, you know you got you got the pass here but i'm like you, you know I, I shouldn't say it i still shouldn't say it because yeah. even then that's not right it's not right for me to say that so i now i've kind of I, I i've eliminated the n-word from my vocabulary but i mean i don't it, it just depends on, it depends on the context how are you saying it how are you saying it? Are you trying to be, are you trying to hurt some, are you cutting somebody down when you say it? Or are you just saying it? Cause you, you know, you're in a room full of your buddies and yeah. you're just, you know, you know, that's another interesting yeah. point is yeah. intent. Yeah. Intense. Everything. Nobody ever, nobody cares about intent anymore. They just care about like us, a word, Yeah, you know, and not what your intent behind it is. Now the N words a little bit different, but uh, that is happening a lot lately yeah. and stuff. Was yeah. you ever one to say the N word or is that not? Is um, that- Probably similar to you, like yeah. in my younger days, just joking. around friends, jokes, you know, um, stuff like that. But um, not not a lot, and you never know, for a derogatory you, term. No, I've ne- I've never been like ah, yeah, you know? yeah. Except when I'm alone in my car in traffic. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, He's joking, yeah. But you know joking. what I'm saying. You know, yeah, like this is comedy. Uh, we're like, well, yeah. When you're young and dumb and stupid, yeah. and you just say dumb shit, you know, and then later you learn, oh wow, like that's not cool, and you shouldn't say that and yeah. stuff like that. But and that's the thing, people learn. People um, learn, man. You got to give people a chance to fucking. You got to. You can't just cancel somebody just because they fuck up one time. Yeah. Tell them not to do it again, and then let them learn from their mis- their actions. You know what I mean? It's tough too, man, because I like to quote a lot of like Chris Rock and a lot, of, like you said, rap and yeah. like a lot of funny ass movies, like. Don't be a menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. And it's yeah, like yeah. hard to, you know, hard to work around, but you know, ah, uh, oh, uh, another thing I was going to bring up is like, um, cause we're talking about like cancel culture and all this. Um, I think it's weird and interesting how like, okay. Uh, you were, you were just, so you just brought up your abortion joke, right? Yeah. yeah. Abortion. Okay. So there's a, there's death metal bands called like dying fetus and like yeah. aborted and shit like that. Right. Nobody's like crying out to cancel these guys. They have entire albums written about crazy shit. Yeah. Um, and they're just like, well, that's art and it's music. And then you have like a band like Slayer that are like parading around as like Satanists, or you have a horror film where a clown, uh, rapes a chick and then like cuts her in half. Like there's all this crazy stuff that gets labeled as like art and artistic, 
but but what's comedy. In, but what's comedy, interesting yeah. about comedy, yeah. yeah. It's like a dude standing on stage saying things that is like created by him. Nope. Can't talk about any of that stuff. Ain't it wild? It, it is a little bit weird. Because I guess with comedy and stand-up, it comes off as like a public speaking thing. Yeah. But people do, like, I don't think people realize that half the shit comedians say is like not even real or true. You know? It's just jokes. Like some of my stuff yeah. that I talk about isn't even like true about me. No. Like... I, like those goth bits jokes I've been doing lately. I'm not like obsessed with fat goth chicks. I just thought that it was like a funny. <laughs> it's thing. a funny premise. I mean, I do. It's like something. Some it's something chicks, to build off of, yeah. and it's funny. I don't know, man. The does, world. Does, the world all right, I gotta crazy. ask. Does Noah Shark got a top? A do, chick? <laughs> do I have a type of, yeah. of woman? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, is it is it fat goth, fat goth chicks? It's fat goth bitches. Yeah, <laughs> I like them morbidly <laughs> obese. Is, uh, um, no. Uh, yeah, uh, my type. The, so, bre- the breathing, the breathing top. <laughs> I'm joking. People have sent me. Uh, people think uh, people like to make jokes because you know how much I like sharks and stuff. Yeah. People will send me like uh, sharks with titties and stuff. Like, hey, does this turn you on? Like dumb shit like that. I'm like, oh god, yeah, dude, I just got done jerking off to. It. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I jerk off to Jaws. Uh, <laughs> that's actually kind of a funny uh, premise, but no. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is kind of yeah. I'm really I'm really weird when it comes to chicks like something about me that I think a lot of people will find I am exact I am divided down the middle 1000% and some people might think that or say that about themselves but when it, when it comes to me this is so true like I'm a wild I'm kind of a wild guy I live a rock and roll lifestyle um, oh, I like yeah, dark dude. humor I'm I kind of I'm kind of fucked up you're and, busy fucking man and then, but also, I'm kind of a goody two shoes. I teach kids music. Yeah. I have a strong moral compass, so I'm really, I'm really divided. I have this dichotomy about myself, and it, and when it comes to women, that's it affects my taste because I do like goth chicks. I like yeah. heavy metal chicks. I like chicks with piercings, tattoos. But I also like uh, cute and cuddly. I I also like nice, sweet, like girl next door. Uh, you know, like um wife and mom material yeah so it's like sometimes it's, I'm, I'm trying to find that right down the middle yeah. i want to find a nice sweet girl that's like good has a strong moral compass um is kind of wife material and good with kids but i want her to be kind of like a party with me and be a cool like you know yeah. sometimes you get a chick that's too far yeah you know and she's like a pilled out whore or you get a chick that's like not cool i had a, I, I i tried to date a normie rec- yeah uh not too recently but i was dating this chick and uh she came over to my apartment and uh like she saw stuff like she freaked that. out yeah and uh this is like normal to me having a big giant skull in my apartment but yeah. she was like why do you like like gross weird dead things you know and i was like <laughs> okay this ain't gonna work out <laughs> you know oh my god like, yeah, oh, yeah it's cool what are you talking about this yeah. is fun this are, is fun what, well what about you are you married or i'm married yeah, okay you're yeah. married yeah. I me thought... and my wife been together 11 years 11 years we've been married for wow yeah, yeah, we've been uh, we've been through the is ringer, she, man. Is she your type, or did you guys have to like work it? No, she's uh she's a hundred percent my type now. She okay. wasn't. Um, she, we were uh, the beginning of our relationship. I was very young and still. Uh, I went through a phase of uh, being a destructive boyfriend. I guess I was very. I, I got you. I was uh, not a one woman man, and then uh, me and my I wife. Understand. Yeah, me and my wife got really. You know, I'm gonna move this real quick. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Go ahead. All right, go for it. Sorry. All right, my bad. No, you're good. No, but me and my wife, what ended up happening between me and her was, uh, we just dated for a long time. She had to, she she put up with so much shit dealing with me, man. I was not really? a good. Yeah, I was I was a horrible partner, and I then f- I finally got my shit together. Uh, I I don't want to say it was before my mom passed. I kind of got to this place where I was like, you know what, I need to stop being this person that I was. I got you. And uh, then me and her got married, um, and then it just man ever since we got married it's been it's been really cool 11 years you said yeah well how old are you i don't even know how old 31 31 oh wow you're young i'm 39 39 yeah how about you like when when you get in relationships being that you're a musician and being that you're doing comedy does that affect your relationships for the most part do you Um, ever have women like oh you got to be cheating on me. Like, I imagine you get that a lot when you're in a relationship because i mean i see women do like to talk to you i mean 
you're, you're right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're 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 exposed to women on the daily when you're in this type of line of work, and it that was hard for me and my wife, you know, because of the our past, you know, right. before we got married. So, you know, especially when I make jokes about like the the cheating joke that I like to make, the one where I say, "Does anybody have kids in here?" and then I'll say, you know, my wife hates when I cheat on her because. <laughs> You know, doesn't it take a village to raise a child? And then I say, not only that, she's a Leo, so I'm just trying to add more to the oh, pride. Yeah. You know, yeah, saying all that stuff. She she's she doesn't really care for that joke too much, but it's like, baby, it does kind of get a pop, and you know, people do like it, especially the my black my black my black audience members. They love that joke. Yeah, but it's like, man, it's like. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there are ladies of the road, and there are ladies that 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 see Dude. you on that stage, and they're they're yeah, yeah. It's like the it's alpha hard. male complex yeah. thing. They yeah. see you up there doing your thing, and they yeah. Yeah, have you ever had like a relationship go sour because of your your craft? Um, early on in my music career, yes, yeah. I had a couple girlfriends where like I'm just starting out and I'm just starting to tour, yeah. and I've had girls that were like checking up on me, like ma- you know trying to make sure I wasn't doing anything. I can proudly say, and this I, I hate admitting this because people like kind of think you're lame if you oh, say this, fuck it, dude. but I never really. I'm not really into like hookup culture and like just banging random like groupies and stuff. So I never really hooked up with chicks on the road at all. Yeah. I always had a girlfriend when I was touring. Now I cannot say So you're a committed man. I can't yeah, I, I'm I'm a pretty loyal person, but I cannot and I'm not just saying this like Anybody that knows me knows I'm kind of a goody two shoes when it comes to that. But, I, dude, I had guys I was touring with that were just like gremlins the moment they got on uh, on tour. They're, they're like, dirty. ah, dirty. they're like, fuck my wife, dude. I, she won't know. You know, like people are crazy, like doing crazy stuff. Um, and that's not right, man. That's, well, it's hey, not, that's it's their not choice. Fair. It's not fair for the, uh, the wife, though. You know, it's, yeah, especially some people are in an open relationship. Now, if they're open, that, that's the, if they're in you an know. open relationship, that's different, you know. But yeah, it's definitely uh, it's definitely one of those things. Like, man, it's hard. It's hard to because we're men, yeah. you know. And then some guys never were getting action before, and then once they start getting it, they're like, oh, I don't know how to deal with it, you know. So it's it's kind of one of those type of deals. So I'm sure, but I'm sure the position you're in, you fucking have the. I'm sure you have a lot of pro. I mean, you have a lot of opportunity because I I can tell when we're at Reno's, some of them chicks are eyeballing the hell out of you, you know. I'm Me, like, yeah, dude. I've never thought that once Shit. about any female in that place. So that's an, that's Shit. interesting. That's uh, that's that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> well, you're up on that stage. You probably ain't really hmm. paying attention either. Yeah, I, I I think I have pretty low self esteem, and I, I I'm sure when a girl is interested in me, I'm like completely oblivious because in my head I'm like just like talking shit about my like I <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I come across as very confident and uh, yeah, you, know, you had me fooled. I figured, yeah, yeah, but I'm yeah. I, I'm I'm really kind of uh, how do I put it? I'm a sad boy, dude. You know, like I, I'm very down on myself. I'm very self-critical. I'm very prone to anxiety and depression, but I am able to put forth like this character, which is kind of maybe why I have like the shark persona, but I, I'm able to like put forth a character that's like way different than how I truly really am. Yeah. Um, when people first meet me, they think I'm an asshole. I'm intimidating that I'm going to be like this, like, you know what I mean? Way different than I really am. But when people start to get to know me, they realize I'm just like a big softy. Yeah. Um, but no, late, later in my music career, I would like bring my girlfriends on the road with me, and they were my merch. They were our merch girl. Yeah. You know, because probably because I was insecure and I didn't want to leave them at home. So I'm like, hey guys, I'm gonna bring my chick. So I mean, we need a merch person, right? But I well, plus it gets her involved. Yeah. She gets to have fun. I'm she a, gets to see what you're doing. Yeah, I've you know? worked through. I, I'm a lot more mature now. I'm, I mean, I'm 39, so like I don't do that. But you know, back in the day when I was young, me and my girlfriends would like look through each other's phone and like had all that kind of drama, jealousy. Yeah. But I, I've like I've chilled out, and you know what's funny is the band Motograder I was mm-hmm. in, we painted our whole bodies and face in paint. Uh, we had tribal like war paint, and uh, sometimes you would see a chick walking through the venue. And she's got like paint on it all over, and you're like, ah, oh, I know, I know where you got that. You know, you see a chick coming out of the bathroom, and she's got like paint, all, you know, like paint. All, like, oh no, yeah. she's been tagged. You know, she's been marked. Hell yeah! <laughs> they were a bunch of gremlins in that band, dude. And Motor Grader, yeah, a lot of alcoholics, a lot of druggies, a lot of uh, crazy shit. Going it's probably down. a good thing you got out of that, man. You know, yeah, you ever big think time about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm grateful, but you know, I was grateful for my time in the band. Yeah. But yeah. Uh um, Do you want to take a break or anything anytime? 
It's up to you. I'm, no, we can if you want to. No, if I don't not, give we, a shit. we don't have to if you don't want to. You don't have to. I'm, f- I'm fine. Okay, good. Um, good I know sometimes some people do like to take a, like stretch their legs or pee or anything. I mean, if, actually, if we could just go ahead and end it right now, I'm just fine. Uh, <laughs> I, don't give, I don't give a shit. I ain't got nothing to do, bro. How okay. long have we been going? Uh, an hour? An hour and a half. Yeah. Or an hour and five minutes. We can uh, stop whenever you want, dude. I'm not very interesting, so I understand. Nah, nah, this is a badass honest. podcast, man. I'm, <laughs> man. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Yeah, we've talked about some uh, interesting things that I haven't uh, talked about in interviews uh, too much. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing. So let's let's get back on the. I, I'll edit some of this stuff out, and you know, I'll let you. I'm, I'm going to send you the when I do my podcast editing, and I, or when I before I launch the podcast, I like send a draft copy, and then I'll let the I got other you. person, yeah, whatever they don't want. So it you edit that. it down. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take certain things out if they don't want it in there. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. But if you could, if you could cut out like any part that I'm in, <laughs> that would be no. I'm just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. Uh, Nobody wants to see that or hear nah, that. Dude, so. nah, dude. Just nah, mute my audio and it'll nah, just be dude, you talking. You are, dude. You are a sought after motherfucker around here in the DFW. You get you get a lot of love, especially from the comedians and from myself. And like I said, man, you're the only motherfucker taking a chance on me. I feel like because I feel like a I think lot it's of just people, you that thinks that, man. Maybe I, I feel see, like that, everybody that, hates. I think me. I think that's the I'm other thing. That's I think that's <laughs> where me and you relate because I do. I'm a very self critical person too. Oh really? I think a lot of times like my stuff sucks. Every time I say a new bit, I think it sucks. No, I think, dude, for four months, I think you're doing great, and I think you're funny, and you have a lot of potential. That's why I booked you on, on you. stuff. Thank you. Also, I just want to like, I like, I like taking somebody that I see that has potential and kind of like throwing them to the wolves. Yeah. Like you know, like, hey man, come do this show, and just seeing them. Like, well, it reminds how, you of you know, the. Com- it, it probably reminds you of your comedy store experience, and you right? sh- and it, you were like. I remember when this happened, and I froze, and then I came back and fucking... Yeah, you need that. Yeah. Have yeah. you done any book shows? This will be my first. March oh, really? 7, March 17th will be my first one. Oh, I didn't know I gave you your fir- first. Dude, yeah. See, yeah. I see. I told you, I give a lot of people yeah. their first book shows. Yeah, I'm excited. I purposely go to open mics, obviously, to do, you know, to work on my stuff, but also yeah. I'm kind of scouting people, you yeah. know? I can kind of see when somebody has, like you know it like yeah you know that guy's gonna be good if he works on it or sometimes you see people and I, maybe i'm wrong but you know i get the impression that like they're not really you know ready the, the ready or gonna do anything yeah you know some people surprise you man some people you see are dog shit and then a couple years later you're like wow that guy got really good yeah. you know i mean i don't think i'm anybody I, i'm trying to work on it just like anybody else you know what i mean i think i suck i think i need to work on stuff which is why uh, which is why I read I read shit like this. Yeah. The comedy bible. Like I'm constantly reading books trying to work on it, you know. But yeah, I thought you were I thought you were good and that's why I wanted to get you on the show and kind of give you a chance to um you know, sink or swim. Yeah, yeah. Just do something. I appreciate that too, man. I wouldn't I really even be do. that nervous. It's going to be a relaxed chill. It's going to be kind of like doing my open mic. Yeah. But, you know, booked version yeah, of it you know yeah. and actual patrons there there's I'm gonna ho- be actual people there to see comedy not just well hope, not just comics we hope so we hope so yeah. we hope so <laughs> you oh, never know but. oh man i imagine dude I'm, I'm gonna blow this thing up too man I'm, I'm trying to get all of sulfur springs to come dude i am you're trying, gonna have them drive an hour and a half i'm to trying to get them all to come i'm posting it all over my social media do you guys have anywhere to do comedy out there at we all we have a few venues but the problem is is it's Maybe very, we could book a show out there. It's a Bible town. Big Bible town, Big eh? Bible town. Yeah, but when you book something like that in a town like that, they do. it does normally show up. The motherfuckers that really do want it will come out of the woodwork, you know? Yeah. Like, I wonder if, um, I wonder if, we could book something. You see how mine, mine works. Yeah, no, like, no, we no. should book something. No, no, I, I like that too, man. Because that, that's that's another thing that drew me to coming to Reno's and checking out, you know, you. Because I was only going to Comedy Reno on Mondays and Canucks on, you know, Monday, late Monday night. I was only making that trip one time a week. Yeah. And I was like, I need to, if I'm going to do this, if this is something I'm serious about, I need to put all the distractions away and I need to really work as, focus on getting my podcast launched and getting people on it and i need to focus on getting quality good 
bits, you yeah. know, to stay on stage. So I may, I now I, I now I do it twice a week. Now I go to I make the trip to Dallas on Monday and on Thursday. So Monday, it's an hour and a half for you. Yeah, it's an hour and a half for me. So I may, I, I I make the trip to from Sulphur Springs to McKinney, and then I'll go to 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 Louisville where Canucks is at, or I'll go to Alexander's if Alexander's is having an open mic. And, I haven't uh, been to Alexander's. You got to man, the gay bars are fun. You oh, ever, it's a gay bar. Yeah, have you ever performed nice. at a gay bar? No, dude, they're fun. I did an all black comedy club. Ooh, how'd that I, go? I thought I was gonna bomb my ass off. I went there on purpose to bomb. Like I was like, you know what? I need a, I need a reality check, man. I want to bomb, because uh, I early on in my comedy career, I, I wouldn't say I exactly ever really bombed. You know what I mean? And yeah. I was like, I hear people like Joe Rogan and all the pros on their podcast talking about how like you need that experience and. um I mean, I'm not saying I was like badass and I, oh, I never bombed. I don't mean it like that. I'm just saying I didn't really bomb yeah. where I like wanted to kill myself. And I was like, let me go to an all black comedy club where I'll get booed off the stage. And they actually kind of liked me and I did pretty well. And I was like, oh, wow, this is crazy. But no, I've never done a gay bar. I live right next to a gay bar, by the way. There's really? a gay bar right there called The Hidden Door. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I have a, I've been working on a bit about like how they keep me up all night. And then one day I go <laughs> over there and all this crazy shit happens. <laughs> and I was telling this to a friend and they were like, well, maybe you should just actually go over there. Maybe something will happen that's actually funnier than this dumb shit you're just creating, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah gay bar hidden door i should go over there one day gay bars are fun yeah gay bars are fun how'd it Ale go alexander's I love alexander's it. is cool i love it that's the only gay bar i've ever been to and done comedy but I interesting love i love it man it is fun there's another one i think 1851 club i think they do one too i've I heard think, of that place i want to go yeah, there too. That, i think that's closer i think it's in arlington it's just so far of a drive where i would go but uh, I like going to DFW, man, I like, uh, or Dallas. I like staying around Dallas area, McKinney, playing. I mean, you know, I, man, it just depends on how far the drive. Like We went to Mad Hatter's, and that's yeah. in Fort Worth. And I was like, fuck, man, that's just – I'm getting home at fucking 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck that shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's 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 just – it's, I need to be closer to the action, and a move is coming. A are you thinking about it? Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, me and my wife are at this place where, like I said, I I, I built a nest egg to where I can kind of where I can go somewhere. Um, I, I still am trying to get a video podcast room set up in my spare bedroom. Yeah, but right now I got enough money to where I can move to either Austin or Dallas. I think about moving to Austin all the time. I'm thinking that's where the big. I think about be. that all the time because yeah. that's where Daddy Joe Rogan's building his club, and that's know, where man. that's where all the money's at. When comedy, that's where all the big hit. That's where all the big hitters are at. It's pretty much going to be, out, it's going to be L.A. and in, in Texas. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to kind of get like good before I do that because it's going to be real cutthroat. I don't out think there. You're never. I don't think you're. I, I, man, I, 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 I still yeah. I still stumble on my words. I'm just, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it, dude. Yeah. Then Fuck again, it. it might make you uh, rise quick. It might make yeah. because when you get thrown to you know to the flames, put to the flames. Yeah. You know, it's uh, you got to make something happen. Yeah. When you have a lot of competition and it's cutthroat, uh, it might make you like work hard. Because I see know? who's out there, and they got a lot of great comedians. That, I mean, there's great comedians here in DFW. DFW has solid fucking comedians. Yeah. There's people out here in DFW that just need eyes. They just need people to see their shit. Yeah. That's all they need. And there's this, a lot of good comedians here and the same that the, the thing about austin is you're getting them eyes when you're at kill when you're on kill tony stuff like that yeah. when you're on uh when you're on, performing at this new club that joe rogan's going to open you're going to have all the, the eyes comedy mothership you. dude i'm telling you yeah it's going to be good uh i think about that all the time dude yeah i really do think of, i think about going to austin constantly um be, i think it's the i think it's the right move i I haven't told not that the DFW scene is it can't it doesn't cut the can't cut the cloth. Yeah, what I'm saying because look at Ralph Barboza, he fucking blew yeah up. man, he blew up. He's doing good. He's doing great, and he's funny. He is funny. And, but but the thing is, is it's if you're where the action's at with Austin with Tom Segura, him and his wife moved there. Yeah, I mean you got all these you got all these heavy hitters that are that move there, and then they're you know they're going to be at the clubs. That's what their profession is. Their profession is yeah. comedy, so they're going to be at the clubs that you're doing open mics at to see who they should take on the road with them. That's all. As a comedian, Definitely. that's what you need. You need to be on the road with somebody. Yeah. That's 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 when you land a big gig is when you go on the road with someone. Yeah, definitely. You know, I've been I've been thinking about this nonstop, and I haven't really told anybody or talked to anybody about it. Yeah. But 
I kind of have this like secret plan to, I don't know if it's soon or in the next year or six months, but what I want to do is, um, my, my, my mom, uh, she lives about 45 minutes outside of Austin Yeah, and she's getting up there in age where like, she kind of needs somebody around to like, uh, not take care of her, but you know, just give her support, help her out with stuff. You know, I could mow her lawn, yeah. but I, th I think about all the time putting my stuff. Cause I've done this several times in my life, putting all my shit in storage and just like really going for comedy really hard. Like yeah. that's all I try to do. Uh, I'm not saying I'm going to go pack up and live with my mom, but if I'm in the area, I could like, uh, I could help her out, be close to family, do the comedy thing in Austin, you know? So I think about it. And then also I, th cause, uh, I've been touring. I've Just been bring chicks back to your mom's house. Fuck yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My yeah. mom, I got this chick. Uh, he won't uh, need you to go to bed or take that melatonin, please. Well, that's one of the advantages. Another advantage I have, as far as like all the stage experience yeah. I had before I started comedy. Another thing I have that's an advantage is I've toured a lot. Yeah. I've traveled in vans, buses. Um, I've slept What's one of behind the dumpsters. Stories? Like I've slept on people's couches. I've done it. I've traveled a lot yeah. and I can really cut it like on the road. It doesn't bother me at all. So I've, I think about all the time just packing up my stuff and like just let, let's see what happens for a yeah. year. If I just go and say, okay, I have to survive doing comedy. You know, like what? Maybe I'll maybe I'll get booked. Maybe you know what I mean. Like maybe yeah. I could actually do it. You never know, man. I might take do that it. leap of faith. I might do it soon. I, I've been that, so, about it. so I gotta ask, what's the wildest? Well, if you can give me, maybe you, maybe you have too many wild ones, but what's one of the wildest stories that you've had, like on the road? <sighs> you know, I always, feel, I always where feel, the cops are called. Let's let's let's. let's let, I'm sure you had the cops called on a few times. Yeah, I've had. You know, it's it's funny that you bring this up, and it's. <laughs> Because it's something that I kind of dread. I am not. Uh, how do I put this? I don't really have like the gift of gab. You know how some people yeah. really have the gift of gab, and yeah. I've always been so jealous of those people. I am not a storyteller. I'm not somebody that, like, when I'm out hanging out with people, talking, I don't ever even mention what I do. I don't say I'm a comedian. I don't say I'm a musician. Yeah, I don't yeah. like. I don't talk about myself like. You know how you get around those people and all they do is brag about everything yeah, they've ever... Yeah. Like, I just don't have that in me to do that. So when I get in an interview setting and people start asking me questions and like delving into me, um, I think I think it's interesting because it, it makes me think about shit. Okay, well, before this long-winded bullshit I'm about to say. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're so you're asking me the craziest shit that's ever happened, right? There are a lot of crazy shit, but like I just don't... It's all a blur. I don't yeah. know. Like The first thing that came to mind when you said that was uh i was playing a show in germany Ooh. and there was like tens of thousands of people in the audience Holy like shit. like it was one of those shows where it's just people as far as the eye can see like wow. sixty thousand people a or sea something. of people and um it was crazy but as soon as my band started playing i was in the browning at the time um as soon as we started playing a thunderstorm happened and the crowd was getting i was we were watching the crowd get hit by lightning Whoa. while we were playing and there was like five huge like circle pits and i'm literally seeing people get hit by lightning and getting carried out in stretchers and we're just up there like rocking like playing like, it was just one of the craziest most surreal Dude, experiences that is dope because like yeah and like you ever seen death clock I Exactly. Yeah, it's like a dead clock <laughs> moment, dude. That is awesome. And I felt bad. It's like, should we stop? Should I like go out there and help <laughs> no, them? Like, am I supposed to that. just keep rocking? <laughs> Hell and, like, yeah. You know, like. Uh, but that's like one of the craziest <laughs> things. Hell yeah! Is doing babe. stuff like that, like touring Europe and yeah. stuff. We we toured Europe in a double decker bus, and um, like everywhere we went, uh, there was like cloches. You know what a cloche is? No. I'm, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm not a fancy boy. But cloches, I think, are like those metal. You know how like when, when you think of fancy, you think of somebody bringing you like a silver platter and like yeah. it was like catering with like the cloches on them okay. and like all the free alcohol we can drink. The promoter's like, whatever you guys want, I'll get it for you. It was like one of those type of That's tours. That's badass. The, like all the shows were sold out and like we're going to uh, France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, like we toured Europe and that, that was a crazy, really surreal experience. That's fucking dope, dude. Yeah, totally. And seeing just like, so you've performed in front of a lot of fucking people. Yeah. 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 I mean, wow. I really, I really did the damn thing. Um, 
where we're like we have lines of people waiting for autographs and you, like you ever miss it kids crying when they meet us like Dude, you know what i mean it's crazy I, I had a guy get my signature tattooed on him like just weird yeah weird Dude, shit. that is fucking that's a cool story i know right but that's it, cool i don't have any like there's a motherfucker out there walking around with your hand yeah i know right tattooed yeah on. that is badass I, dra- I draw this little like shark guy on my signature and like yeah. he wanted that so he got it tattooed on him but um that is awesome. Man. What's funny? What, yeah. What's funny is I've done stuff that other musicians like probably only dream of, right? But then there's that next level where like there's people that have done shit. You know what I mean? Like Ozzy yeah. Osbourne, System of a Down. Like when I look at people, there's people that like I think that about. I'm like, man, if I could only get to that level, and it's just no matter what you do, there is going to be people that look up to you and like want to do what yeah. you do and stuff. So I've always tried to be in like. My entire music career, I always tried to offer bands advice and help them. Yeah. That's why I started a record label. That's why I started a booking company. I was like trying to help them and bring everybody up. I'm one of those guys. Like, who's coming with me? Yeah. You know, I'm not because whenever I was coming up in music, I would try to talk to people and ask them questions, and they treated me like shit. They were yeah. like, "Get out of here, little kid. Shut up." And I always knew if I ever get to a place, there was that there wasn't that camaraderie. That they didn't yeah. have that camaraderie. Well, with the comedy, they have that camaraderie a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So now yeah. I'm bringing that to my co- just yeah. naturally. It's how I am. You know, I'm a teacher. I've always been that like really helpful. I want to I want to help people. I'm a fan of the underdog. Yeah. That's how I am with like my kids and my and my students, and it's what I'm bringing to comedy too. Yeah. I just try to help everyone. It's a, you know what? That's kind of a, something I wanted to bring up if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Is we were talking last night at the open mic. I don't know if you were there, but I was kind of whenever before the show starts, I'll just start bullshitting with the comedians. Yeah. And I was talking about the divisiveness and shittiness in Dallas. And I, and I, I'm not sure if it's with every like every major city that has is a it comedy, the comedy scene. scene you're talking about. Yeah, the comedy yeah, scene. Yeah. I don't know if every major city has that going on or if Dallas is just really bad, but man, there is a lot of gatekeepers here. There's a lot of people that think their shit don't stink. A lot of jealousy, a lot of drama, people talking shit about each other. Uh these little like little cliques and groups. I hate that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I hate it. And I, I always want to just like make it one big community. Yeah. And um what's what I, the reason why I'm bringing it up is because like it's so bad here in Dallas that even a dude like me who hates that stuff and doesn't want to be a part gets of any a, drama gets reeled into it. They, they try to suck you in, yeah. man. I had some stuff go down that was pretty heavy. Yeah. Uh, where I got like, I don't want to say I got canceled cause I'm not Dave Chappelle. Yeah, DCC. I'm not, I'm not talking huge. about this. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. And by the way, it had nothing to do with the comedy club. Yeah. It, like they weren't a part of it. It was the people that like, it was the comedians there yeah. and the performers there. I got kind of like canceled from there and it was so dumb. What basically what happened, and I haven't talked about this at all. Uh, not publicly. I don't think, but like there was this feminist group that was kind of like, or I don't even know if they're, f- yeah, they're like feminists. They're woke, woke, yeah. woke yeah. comedians. Shit like that. They happened to see that I had a show that had no women on it, right? Uh, and I book a lot of women. I try yeah. so hard to book women, but there's only like one female comic for every like 20 dudes. Yeah, a lot but of women don't do comedy. If you look at my history, like if you went through all my show flyers, all my shows have women on them. I yeah. try, I love I love female comics. I think they're funny. You know, a lot of guys try to say, oh, they're not funny, blah, blah, blah. I have a lot of friends that are chicks that are comedians that are funny. Yeah. And I try to book them. But this one show I did, no females. And this... uh this female comic was like getting shitty and like talking shit on my flyer saying, Oh, you made a huge mistake not booking any women on this show. Shit like that. And, um, I regret it now, but I kind of was reactive to that because of how I am. Like I, I try to help everybody. I have women comedian friends. So I reacted very negatively and I just like, I ended up calling her a dumb bitch. Mm. You know, I was like, shut up, you dumb bitch. Like, and, uh, her and her little lackeys and all the feminists, chicks and see, woke comedians. See, look what he did look they, what he called me they just yeah, yeah descended upon me <sighs> uh with a fury and i I made an public apology to her yeah. for calling her a dumb bitch i really did and i really meant it i was did like she, you know did what she, did she accept the apology yeah i mean her talked yeah, yeah. and stuff and it was fine but the reason why it got blown out of proportion is because that same show that she was talking shit about happened to have alex stein as the headliner mm. and alex stein is a super far right wing guy yeah. and um so when they saw that i had no women on the show that i called her a dumb bitch and that i had alex stein on the show suddenly for a moment there 
everyone that's in the Dallas comedy scene saw me as like a misogynistic, racist, far right wing piece of shit. And um, and if anybody knows you, knows that you are not. Well, that. I mean, you can cry all day long about yeah. like you're not a certain thing, but uh, yeah, I got I was the bad guy, and the Dallas Observer yeah. wrote an article about it saying. You know, Dallas comedian in, you know, hot water because of blah, blah, blah. And like, it just got really weird. And, um, like, I don't, I would never in a million years see any kind of creative thing on the internet, no matter what it is a show flyer, somebody's song. I would never say anything negative about yeah. any of that stuff. I would never say, oh, you're fucking up because you're not doing this or you're, you're an idiot. Like, so that's why I reacted so badly because she was doing that to me and I regret it. But yeah, I had to lay low. I couldn't do shows at that comedy club for a while. Like I, a bunch of crazy shit went down. Yeah, but it's crazy how that shit yeah. happens. Yeah, how it can snow, spiral out of control. Like, dude, like it was, it could have been just a something like, like you said, it was nothing. And then you just basically replied like, crazy bitch, whatever. Yeah, dumb bitch. Do what you got to do. And then she got mad because you called her a bitch. Yeah. So it's like, fuck, we can't even call each other a bitch no more. I mean, <laughs> we can't, why can't what happened to just? I mean, you do it all the time when you drive and you cut yeah. somebody off and you just flip them off and right. then you go on about your day. What the fuck, man? I mean, she was being a dumb bitch. <laughs> she really was. You know, even though I did apologize, I, I shouldn't have said that publicly. I, <laughs> but she was, you know, I, she really was, though, kind of like uh, if she knew me, she would know I book, you know, females and shit. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it was weird, you, man. Yeah, you I, book a lot of females. Hell, there's always women getting up there in Reno's chop shop, getting up there and doing a five minutes. Yeah, I and mean, you know they they fucking do a great job when they get up there. Yeah, it's that's what I tell people because I've had I I, I talked to uh, another comedian prior to the um, today, and I was telling him I was like, look, man, I was like, you need to come check out Reno's chop shop. He's like, it's a biker bar, and I was like, look, I said, you yeah. walk in. You smile. I said, everybody's so fucking friendly. I said, they're, totally. they're they're friendly people. I said, they're cool. It said, none of that. When you get back there on that stage, when you get to the venue, it's it's built for comedy. It's perfect for comedy. Like you're I up. So. On, I, I think it's great. It is a good venue. It's great, man. I and, I, and I and 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 I get nothing but love there, man. Yeah. Like I love that 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 fucking venue. Like what y'all got going on there, I fucking love it. You know, maybe I'm just being biased because. You guys are helping me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, it's not it, – it was my vibe. That's the reason when I heard – Yeah, we get that I, a lot. I've heard people talk – um, I heard I heard about your venue through Anthony uh, Ramos and Bill King. They were both having oh, a cool. conversation back and forth, and I was, they were like – I was like, where was y'all – where was this at? And he was, he was like, Reno's Chop Shop. I was like, oh, check that out. Yeah, that's awesome. And then he told me it was hosted by you, and I was like, I've seen him a couple times. He's the dude that has the long hair. I was like, hey, fuck yeah, he looks like my kind of guy. So, yeah, let me, let me go check right, that yeah. out. Right, yeah. Rocker so, types. Rocker yeah, so dudes. I was like, let me go check this place out, man. As soon as I stepped foot in that place, I was like, this is my, this is where I love it. Cool. I love this. I love this, this venue. I love this spot. I love the whole, the whole thing. And I was like, yeah, this is this, especially that fucking in the background. You got the fucking right. Oh, the backdrop dude. behind us is like a big skeleton oh, riding a motorcycle. Dude, yeah, so I like cool. the rock and roll vibe of it. Dude, yeah, it's, cool. it's so cool. Then there was a. You said there was a mouse or a rat that went across. Dude, that's yeah, fucking rat adds rat that across. adds love to that. That just adds that grittiness to it. Yeah. Man. By the way, they're not a lot of the venues. <laughs> I just want to say this: a lot of the places in Deep Ellum, food places included, have mice and rats. Deep Ellum kind it's of a has. City Thing. Yeah, Deep Ellum yeah. kind of has that problem. But just to let everybody know that's listening to this, Reno's, they care a lot about that. When I told them that a rat had run across the freaking stage <laughs> during the show, they were horrified. And then they hired an exterminator. They put, you know, like they're Hell doing yeah. what they got to do. But um, I've been, yeah, I've been trying to help them rebrand the place because yeah. that's what a lot of people say is, isn't that a biker bar? And yeah, it is a biker bar. They do a lot of heavy metal, a lot of rock and roll. So I've been helping them kind of rebrand, uh, not not rebrand but i've been helping them build up their reno's live yeah. image because you know the venue has a name it's reno's live yeah um reno's chop shop does have like a like a biker you know yeah. hot rod connotation so i've been kind of going the the reno's live i even went on google i don't even know if they're aware of this yet i told them i was going to do it but uh, i haven't like told them i got listed on google reno's live music and comedy venue you know what I mean? That way, like, people will find it from the comedy thing. Fuck yeah. And it's been working, dude. I've had people come out and say, hey, I was Googling comedy in Dallas, and I found this comedy venue. And I was like, yeah, it's working, dude. Hell yeah. That's all that matters is but working. But you know how that open mic started? How did, yeah, how did that come into So, 
the way it started was I was uh, starting to get comfortable with comedy, but I wanted to like take that next step, right? Yeah. I was like, man, how do I get booked? Like nobody will book me. Nobody will give me the time of day. Nobody gives a shit. So I reached out to a couple comedians uh, that I had been like seeing at open mics and stuff that were like really good. Mm -hmm. And I was like asking them advice. Like, hey man, I, I don't want to bug you or nothing, but like, I'm just curious, like if you have any advice for somebody who like is ready to, next, to take, take the next step, I want to get booked on shows. Like what can I do to like, yeah. you know, go to the next level to get my name out there. And this guy, uh, I don't, th I, I don't see why he would care if I brought him up. Uh, I, th I believe his name's Todd Birdwell. Shout out to Todd Birdwell. Todd, I, I'm pretty sure that's his name. Todd Birdwell. He's a really cool guy and he's a great comic, but yeah. he's, he was like, dude, one thing you can do is, uh, like start an open mic. He was like, a lot of people will, or, or just book your own show. Yeah. Once people see that you're competent enough to like host, uh, or b book your own show or like start your own open mic. You know, you, a lot of people will get stuff that way. And I was like, all right, cool. Um, very, very soon after that, I was at Reno's hanging out and I started talking to the owner and I was like, Hey man, I had actually been talking to another place and was begging them to let me do something there, yeah. but they were like, they wouldn't take me serious. They didn't care. But the, but Steve actually like was like, you know what? He was like, we don't have anything going on on Thursdays. Um, and, um, you know, we like you, you seem cool. Like, let's try to do something. And we shook hands and, uh, it's just like, uh, took off from there, man. I just like, I was, they let, now they let me do whatever I want back there. And like, I, you know, it's really built a following. Well, it's fucking the way you got it set up is perfect though. The, the, I lucked the, out though. Dude. The place I was begging to let me do stuff, they yeah. closed, you know? So like, I'm glad I got in at Reno's, you know? <laughs> oh shit. This camera turned off. No, it's fine, man. But no, that's, that's how it works, man. You know, that's how the shit works. I mean, you're going to have people that are afraid to get in business. It's like, it's like they don't want to yeah. give you that chance. And, but then as soon as you start getting the ball rolling on certain things, it, it just it spirals and next thing you know you're fucking selling out fucking venues you got how many like you said you got so many shows i've seen your flyer that you have where you're it's kind of you're replicating the nirvana the nirvana oh uh, yeah dude I, fucking shows boom 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 i'm like oh yeah how does this dude do it like I, how, how how do you manage your schedule um that's a great question that that camera might turn off again but whatever we you know it's an audio podcast that yeah, we're it is. trying to do a little bit of video with uh yeah, experimenting yeah. uh that's a great question uh so like once i uh so when i when i was in the music industry more and i wasn't doing comedy i started my own company called swim with sharks entertainment yeah the reason why i did that is because i was reading um I was reading Marilyn Manson's book, Long, Long Hard Road Out of Hell, and he was talking about how uh, in his early days trying to make it in a band, he basically, uh, he kind of like pretended to be a journalist writing articles about bands, mm -hmm. and he wrote about his band a lot. Yeah. And uh, it helped him like a lot and uh also recently i've been i was reading this comedy bible yeah and in here the lady that wrote this book is talking about how and to get booked she would uh pretend to be her own manager because oh. the moment somebody sees that like somebody else or another entity or company is like backing you or behind you um it kind of like gives merit to what you're doing yeah so like when i was trying to make it back in the day over 10 years ago in my first band i started swimming with sharks entertainment and i would like hit up people uh, as Swimming with Sharks Entertainment, the company, and like I would talk up the band and say, "Hey, I've got this band I'm managing. They're really good, you know." And I would talk them up, and they're not even aware that like I'm the drummer of the band. Yeah, I was just doing it as like an entertainment company. Once that started to like work really well for me, I started to do things for other bands and people, and it kind of took off. Like I started to help band, I started to help promote bands, and um, I then I turned it into a record label. Once I got signed and started touring and, and was doing all this cool shit, I was like, you know, I could help other bands do this stuff. So that's where Swimming with Sharks Entertainment came from. And then uh, once I, now that I'm in the comedy thing, I'm taking all that knowledge and I'm putting it to comedy. So yeah. I'm already good at booking. I'm already good at like talking to people and marketing and promoting and like all this stuff. I'm just basically using all that knowledge for like the comedy thing. Yeah. So once I once I started this open mic, um, I I, uh, I started marketing it as like a comedy showcase and open mic and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, uh, 
I just use the Swimming with Sharks Entertainment Company and uh, the fact that I like host a weekly show and um, I just started. Uh, well, also going to a lot of open mics and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like doing what you're doing is exactly the right thing. Like yeah. you meet people and they start seeing that you're getting good. And they, that's where you, the networking happens. If you're trying to get into comedy, just go to as many open mics as you can. Try to network, make friends with people, be yeah. cool with people. And you'll start getting opportunities. You'll be, start making and be friends. Honest. And, be honest. Yeah. Be genuine. Don't be a fake motherfucker. Yeah. Because yeah. some of these people are going to start taking off and they're going to bring your ass with them. Yeah. You know, like that's kind of how the Anthony Ramos thing happened. Yeah. He was in the audience one day and I was like, I pointed to him and I was like, Hey man, cause like in the early days of doing my open mic, we didn't have a big audience and there was barely anyone there. Yeah. So like sometimes I would just try to make some like funny shit happen or like make a show happen. So I was, I would, sometimes I would t talk the audience member into coming up on stage and trying comedy. I did that with Anthony and he killed. Like it seemed like maybe he was thinking about it. Already had material worked out. Oh, but so like, hold on. He, the first time he got on stage and did a set, I was, talked him into it. Wow. I was like, hey, dude, you look funny. You should get up here and try this shit. And he Holy goes, he shit. literally goes, because he is funny. He goes, okay. He comes up on stage and it seemed like he had been doing it for years. And I was like, man, that's crazy. Whoa. And uh, so me and him became friends and um, uh, he that's just started awesome, like kind of co hosting. That is you know? awesome. Like dude. Uh, I had him co host a, a couple times and then he just started like showing up and. He kind of at first he did he kind of wedged himself in that position you yeah. know because I wanted to like rotate it but he actually ended up being like pretty good at co-hosting and he and he helped me a lot with stuff and like uh, he's you know we, we I think we have a good dynamic so yeah now he's the co-host I love but, the briefcase idea the, oh yeah the topics that's yeah. funny dude that's funny shit because like it, it's it's like a kind of it's improv it's a little bit of something you know well if you don't have material here I, this kind of gets you a little premise you can work off of or something yeah. you know. Like I do, I think it's so. I think it's so smart. I think it's. I think it's really cool the yeah. way you got it set up up there. Uh, like I said, from you to you and Anthony sitting on stage to you pulling up fucking different things while people are doing their bids. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, it's just it's a whole fucking vibe, man. It really is. Well, you were, yeah, you were, you were asking um, how I uh, like manage my schedule and yeah, get booked yeah, yeah, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, when, whenever I've like even during this podcast, I've talked about how like I'm good at marketing myself and selling yeah. myself. A lot of comedians. Okay, so you know how I run this company, Swim with Sharks Entertainment. Yeah. I get a ton of band submissions, and I get a lot of comedy, like comic submissions. You ever, right? You ever dabble in rap? Dabble in rap? Yeah, rappers hit me up all the time. Okay, but I haven't really done anything that's it with that yet. But right. um, I have, to, I have to bring up one of my guys after the podcast. But okay, go yeah, go for it. Uh, what I was gonna say is you'd be surprised I'll get emails from people and it's like literally just their name or they're like, Hey, this is me, Dave. I'm just seeing if I could get on any shows and that's all it is. Right. What I do is like, I have like a, an electronic press kit. You know, I have yeah. a website. I have Noah And if you go there, it's got pictures of me. It's got a bio. It's got my video. It shows all the shows that I've done. Uh, I so when I hit somebody up about a show, I'm very professional about it, yeah. and that really goes a long way, you know. Plus, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. If you keep, if you keep showing up to places, and you keep meeting people, and you keep messaging them, and pestering people, and like you know, making people aware of your presence, um, you know. So that's how I've been getting booked is just like networking and meeting people yeah. and like being professional. But yeah, a lot of comics are trying to get booked, and like they don't have any. They don't even send me a link to their set or like. A link to anything yeah. it's just like a message hey yeah. i'm trying to get on some shows but when i get a message that's like a dude that's like hey, here's my bio this is everything i've done uh you know i'm really serious about this here's my pictures here's my headshot you know when that when it's like really professional it goes it goes a long way you know because yeah. like really you can helps. tell you can tell that there's hunger there yeah totally yeah and, and and that's one thing like at the last company i worked for at the brewery i i loved working there as a bartender and everything but they didn't have vision and here I'm, I'm in the right now i'm in the process of vision i need big vision i need to be i, I need to surround my people myself with people that have vision because totally i have a big vision i want to be a household name one day you know what right. i mean and i feel like if you're not in this for 
to, to be a household name, then what are you in this for? Just to hang out and kill time. There's people that do right. that too. And there's people that just enjoy networking. They just enjoy, you know, getting to meet people and just getting on stage, telling yeah. jokes and then going back to their, their normal life. But me, I want this to become my job. You know, I want this, like, I want this to not just be a, a hobby. I want this to be a career, you know? Right. And like I told you before, on, before we started recording, you know, I, when I quit my job, I was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta get serious about this thing. If I'm not going to work again, you know, if I'm yeah. not going to, or, you know, I'm going to work, but do and what I want to do, you know? Totally. So it, it's, 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 it's hard, but the, the thing is, man, grinding, just stay, staying consistent, keep yeah. putting out, you know, comedy, keep putting out bits, keep putting out new episodes, even right. though, even though, you know, maybe nobody's listening when you think they are, but it'll, 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 it all, it all pays off, man. It all pays off. I, I just feel like as long as you're being consistent and you're being fucking kind of psychotic about your approach to it, then yeah. it, then it works. It always ends up working out in the end for those that work hard. Totally. Yeah. And I, and I can tell that you work your ass off, dude. Like, yeah. And that's one thing I was like, dude, this guy right here, he's the one he's, he's on, he's on, he's, he's, he's got the stars in his eyes. You I know? do. I yeah. always have. Yeah. yeah. And I work really hard and I don't, I don't let anything get in my way. I've always had the mindset that like you can do anything you put your mind to. Yeah. That's why, that's probably why I did what I did in the music industry. Cause while I have a bunch of people crying about all the things they're not doing, I'm packing up my drums and my clothes in my car and I'm driving out to Hollywood alone yeah. and living in a rehearsal space. You know what I mean? That's what I did. How, how old was you when you went to LA? Um, I was 27. Yeah. Um, what drove you to move out that way? So that's, dude, that's a great question. That's actually a really great question. When I was really young, like 17, 18, I was walking around downtown Dallas and just like something out of a movie, there was a dark alley. I swear to God, this is true. There was like this weird fortune teller lady with like this little booth set up. Yeah. And uh, I think I was on a date maybe with a chick, but I was like, cool, fortune teller, let's do this, babe. You know, and she reads my fortune and she tell she starts telling me all this stuff about how when I get to the age of 28, um, I will be at the peak I'll be at like the height of my career. And she was like, I can tell you're an entertainer. I didn't tell her shit about myself. She was yeah. like, you're an entertainer, maybe a musician, something like that. And, um, she, she was like telling me that when I was 28 years old, that I would, uh, be at the pinnacle or whatever. And like, I would make it. And, uh, that always stuck with me. And, um, I'm not going to say that because that fortune teller said that what I'm saying is there was always this little tiny kernel in my mind that like, maybe it could also be a self-fulfilling prophecy like yeah. yeah i don't know how to explain it but so i'm in a band in dallas and we're doing everything we can we're just playing shows we're traveling but i started to feel that like i was around 26 27 years old i was like you know what it's not happening i need to take the reins and i need to like make something happen yeah you know what i mean so i i came up with this crazy hair brand idea to move to hollywood and i to convince my, my band members some of them to come with me so i go out to hollywood i live in a rehearsal space a, a month or two later a couple bandmates of mine come out there with me yeah we're all living in a one rehearsal space together it was oh, horrible shit. it didn't it didn't work out because a couple of the members were like we can't do this yeah. like we're not cut out for this we cannot do this me i could do i could do it forever yeah because i'm just so gung-ho on doing something and making you had it. your mind made up yeah yeah but i can understand why they wouldn't like no, it's not for everybody to live like shit and make yeah. all these sacrifices but um yeah, it was it was insane what I did, and uh, I've done that like several times in my life. I'm the, I'm the kind of person that I'll sacrifice everything. I'll pack up all my shit right now and put it in storage, and I'll go live on the road to like make. Have sure you made I'm a in. sacrifice to Satan yet? No, I haven't made a sacrifice. Maybe that, you know what? Maybe that's the next step. Maybe that's the next uh, thing that I should do. But like, hey man, I need an HBO special. What do I gotta do? Like, slip my wrist right now? Like, you ever uh, you watch Little Nicky, man? We all love. That oh movie. yeah, you know when Dan Marino's in there negotiating, man. What do I gotta do to get a Super Bowl? <laughs> I just think oh of, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think of that scene every time because you totally. know Dan Marino was a great quarterback that never won a Super Bowl. Yeah, but <laughs> I, just, I think it's hilarious. Like, he's like, hey, you know, I don't really care for you, man. I just, yeah, yeah, you're good. <laughs> I remember, yeah, Little Nicky was a great movie. Oh, dude, that's dude, I dude, that was probably one of my favorite Adam Sandler movies. Even Either yeah. Little Nicky or um, Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore is pretty fucking funny too. Totally, but Little Nicky, man, that was woo, that was that was a fucking badass movie. 
But yeah, even <laughs> like we, you know, this comedy fest that yeah, I got coming yeah. up, dude. April first, April first, uh, dude. April you're on Fools, that too. Hell yeah. April Fools comedy fest. Um, that's another example of just how I operate. I don't, yeah. I don't ever sit and think like of all the reasons why I can't do something. I yeah. just say, I just do it. You know yeah. what I mean? I had a lot of people naysay and be like, dude, starting a festival, that's insane. But I went and did my very first festival recently. Um, I got booked on um, Tower City Comedy Festival. Hell yeah. I went out to Paris, Texas and did that. And when I saw the operation and like how it was all kind of put together, my immediate thought was, just, I think I do this with a lot of things. I just thought I could do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying that April Fool's Comedy Fest is like this big thing. Oh, but it's big. It's a stepping stone. Yeah, it's big. What I would like to do is actually build it to like an actual comedy fest. It is a comedy fest, but I how want many, to build how it. How many you know, comedians do you have? Booked? 70. 70. 70 comics are on it. Hell yeah. yeah. And Hell we're, we're talking yeah. about the drama and divisiveness. Like, I know that there's a murmur in Dallas about, like, who's this guy I think he is booking a comedy fest? He's not even funny. He sucks. Like, look at all these comics that are even on it. They're nobodies. And, like, I know that that's happening, but you got to start somewhere, man. Damn. You know? And I like giving people a chance. Maybe maybe some of the comics that are on it are brand new to comedy and don't deserve to be on a comedy fest. But I disagree. If I was somebody in the audience, I would want to see a seasoned pro, and I want and I would like to see the guy struggling to swim, yeah, as well. Yeah, and I would like to well, see you you're know giving like everybody a, a wide variety. You're giving people yeah. an opportunity, man. You're giving people an opportunity to shine. You got yeah. seventy comedians there. The motherfucker that that everybody's talking about at the end of that night. That's going to be yeah. your dude that, that's shining. That's going to be the big shine. That's going to be, it's kind of like, in a weird way, it's kind of like a, a race in a weird yeah. way. Yeah. And so I'm so, definitely, I'm definitely getting prepared for that. Now. Some Man, people I'm might excited. disagree with what I just said. Like if you pay 30, 40 bucks to go to a comedy show and yeah. there's five comics, you don't want one of them to be dog shit. You right. paid $40. You're there to see a good ass show. Yeah. But if you pay $10 and there's 70 comics going for eight hours, it's yeah. two stages. Each stage is four hours straight. Yeah, that's um, that's eight hours of solid comedy, right? Yeah, you paid ten bucks. It's fine if a couple open micers go up there and try to fucking do some shit. Buy it's some five minutes. They're gonna Buy do some five more minutes. Beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy yeah, more yeah. beer. Eventually, they'll be funny. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, some of them are. I mean, you're, no, they, you're on yeah. there. You're, no, there's, you're there, funny. There, no, there's funny people on there, man. Like, yeah. I, I think there's a lot of great talent that you got booked. I haven't seen a name on there where I'm like, oh, that, well, there's people I don't know because you of know, course. I'm new on the scene. But all the people that I do know that's on there are fucking funny. I want to build this. What, I'm, I'm loving it. Dude. What I want to do, and I haven't told anybody. I want it to become. You're about to tell everybody. I want it to become everybody. <laughs> hell yeah, everybody. Hey, hey, world, world. This is what I want to happen. No, what I what I would like for it to happen is I would like to be the guy that starts Deep Ellum Comedy Fest. You know what I mean? Now, the reason why I say that in such a like trepidatious trepidatious. What, what, what you want to you want to have a block you want to have I'm, a block party. I'm, well, comedy. I'm trying to tread lightly because. Who am I, right? Dallas Comedy Club exists in You're Deep Noah Shark fucking Robertson. That's Will Call does comedy in Deep Ellum. Yeah. Dallas Comedy Club does comedy in Deep Ellum. But the reason why I'm doing this April Fool's Comedy Fest is it's proof of concept. I'm yeah. going to take what I've done and I'm going to present it to Dallas Comedy Club. And I'm going to say, hey, look, I know you guys probably have had this thought too to do a, to do a Deep Ellum Comedy Fest. But look what I've done. Can we do it together? Can I help you? Can we, you know what I'm saying? Like, like can I help you? Are, are y'all going to grow with me or am yeah. I just going to take this shit over? And that, that, that's how I got, sh that's how I am a show runner at yeah. Dallas Comedy Club now. I took all my um, shit that I did on my own and I put it into like a presentation and I was like, hey, look, this is what I'm capable of. And it got me, you know, now I'm a producer at shows at Dallas Comedy Club. So yeah. everything's a building block. Man, and look a at that. You, you went from going barred for saying a, a <laughs> fucking little thing and now you're fucking running shit at the d or not running shit but well you're, yeah i was a show runner before the cancellation yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was producing shows at dallas comedy club before the drama happened but yeah. i just got my show back yeah you know they sent me an email and they were like hey you know sorry about all the drama that happened but you know you've been laying low we think you could come back. Things are cool now. You know, you apologized. You took your licks and yeah. blah blah blah. At but, least they, at least they yeah. came around. That's good. All the, I just, all the people talking shit in Dallas. Um, yeah. They just, 
I don't know if they realize that like I just don't care. I'm not involved in any. But of really, that. I don't. I never heard nobody talk shit about you. Okay, good. No, like every time I've ever had discussions about you before I ever met you, it was all positive. Like, That's man, great. This dude, like this dude, he is. But then again, you're straightforward. You're like a four month. You, you've been going four months. You know, there's people. I'm telling you, there's people yeah. here that have been doing it for like ten years yeah. that are like sour because they never did shit or whatever. They talk shit about everybody. Yeah. They're going to talk shit about you. That's You're going to see it. That's their problem. They're going to talk shit about Tony yeah, Cruz. That's fine. <laughs> that, I, who does, I who's it. that guy think he is? I love know? it, man. I'll be like, yeah, please yeah. come talk to me on the podcast and we can figure out why you don't like me. But I don't know. It's not a contest. <laughs> For me, it's not a contest. Hell no, I love man. the craft. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. love the craft. I think every person that does something creative has something unique to offer yeah and everybody is capable of something that i'm not probably you know like tony cruz has his own style yeah everybody nobody can be life. tony cruz but tony cruz right, you know right, right. so when i when i saw you i like appreciated that i was like look at this fucking white looking mexican hillbilly dude hillbilly mexican <laughs> what, what what did you what's your joke about billy ray cyrus uh, billy ray cyrus and miley cyrus you look a baby like, yeah if they had a baby that's a great joke by the way <laughs> But no, I saw you wearing like a kilt and, uh, you know, you, with your dark comedy. I don't know. I, every comic I see, I just find something that I really love about them. You I know? do go to comp back door too. And I'm trying to, I'm oh, trying yeah. to, I'm trying, trying to, to do craft the clean it. comedy. I'm trying thing. to craft it. No, I'm trying to do clean. I watched your clips from that. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to craft it. I want my comedy to resonate with not just, like I said, I want to be a household name, dude. I want to be what Kevin Hart is to an extent you know i don't want to do wow. movies. i don't want to do movies that's the thing that's Maybe. a lot to go but hey There's you money. never fucking know who knows man who knows who knows what i want to do i just i just want to fucking i just want to take this thing to the top dude. well well you know what joe rogan biggest media platform that exists yeah. today he, he's doing numbers bigger than cnn yeah. right fox started just like this yeah started in his living room two dudes talking yep um he had hundreds of viewers at first yep. now look at him yeah nine between nine and 11 million downloads, downloads every fucking month episode so you never know what could happen you never you know. just gotta go for it dude and that's the thing like with today like well, especially with the internet and with social media oh, your stuff could just snowball like one totally. one night you you wake up and you your fuck one of your clips went fucking viral You're, right you know it, it, now you got fifty thousand views on a clip and you're like yeah. whoa and you got somebody taught making you know response videos to your clip or whatever it it's just man with the internet anything is possible yeah you know i heard somebody say i can't remember who it was but they said with youtube with YouTube and with all this stuff that with all these social plat platforms, it's that's like your cheat code in life. Yeah, it's a cheat code. If uh, you remember playing Grand Theft Auto and you'd, I mean, back when it was, you know, you could have, you could make people riot and you can give them all weapons and have them shoot each other. Remember GTA Vice City? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, dude, the internet is kind of like a cheat code to, in life, and I, <laughs> and that's how, that's that's the way I'm I'm trying to use it. Yeah. My thing is I'm not very tech savvy because I didn't I, I didn't have I didn't have for a long time I didn't have any, like I said I didn't have a phone. This was off the podcast. You're earlier. a country boy, dude. I am. I used to, I didn't have a phone for a long time. I didn't have social media for a long time. I was the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the same. It took me. I was like one of the last people to get a fucking phone and get on social media and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but you, I understand. Do you? Uh, how do you? Do you? Um, do you have a healthy relationship? Do you think with your social media? Do you stay on it? Or are you one yeah. of people that? Yeah, see, I'm I'm, a, I'm kind I'm of really, a social media whore now a little you? bit. I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's people out there that are like annoyed by the level that I do stuff, Fuck but it. I just try to be relevant and do it. You know, it's all about content, man. You yeah. got to keep putting out content. You've been doing it. You've been putting up clips and yeah, like yeah. you're doing a podcast. Like you're doing all the right shit. And at four months in, you, you're way ahead of the curve. There's there's people that have been doing comedy for a long time that don't have yeah social media or like a podcast and then or they wonder why they're any kind of nowhere right it's the yeah and it's the dude sending me an email that's just like their name you know like yeah. you gotta get out there man you gotta get eyes on you yeah. you know you gotta get with the times dude was, you you're know, right about the yeah. viral thing can come yeah. out of nowhere um it I, happened that's how ralph barboza got blew up dude yeah out of fucking nowhere out of nowhere yeah i like one, one thing randomly that happened to me um I made so I was backstage at a show on tour with Jeffrey Nothing, and I took a milk jug or I, a water jug. You see that mask up there? 
that stupid yeah, yeah. plastic mask. <laughs> I've seen you, that on your uh, okay. social media. Yeah, it's bad. yeah it's bad. I uh, I made it's a like joke. Mankind. I was like, man, God. You know what's funny? This was before I was doing stand up. Yeah. In between bands, I went out on stage. I didn't tell anyone I was going to do this. I just went out on stage, and uh, I would because I would always do stuff like that. I would go on stage and like tell jokes, but I didn't see it as stand up. I just saw it as me being a dumb asshole. You know, like I'm a drummer, I'm so I'm, but I'm a goofy guy. Uh, I, I I made a fake. Corey Taylor mask because he had just released a new mask that looked like that kind of. I went out on stage and told everybody I had ordered it on their website. You know, it cost me nine hundred ninety nine dollars. I was like, check it out, y'all. I'm Corey Taylor, and like everyone was dying laughing. And uh, I, somebody took a picture of me, and it went super viral, like yeah. to the point where Slipknot was sharing it. Corey Taylor was sharing it. Uh, er, all the media sites, Metal Injection, all the heavy metal sites were sharing it, laughing about it, saying the the Slipknot cosplays have begun. And like it just went so viral. But here's the shitty thing about it: it's me wearing a stupid plastic jug on my face. Nobody knew it was me. So, uh, so Halloween came around very soon after that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to milk this thing. I put the jug on and I started walking around Deep Ellum and people were like recognizing it and taking pictures with me. But when I told them, because they were like, yeah, dude, it's like the meme. And I was like, no, I'm the meme. And they were like, yeah, okay. You know what I mean? They were like, yeah, yeah okay. You wish, buddy. And I was like, no, that's me. I was really me. And they're like, yeah, keep dreaming. But yeah, that was a weird thing that happened. Like out of nowhere, you never know what could pop off. It's like you were you were famous with the milk jug. With the milk they were, jug, they were like, no, that you're not really that guy, yeah. dude. I swear I'm that guy, dude. Like, look, here's the picture. Yeah, yeah, it looks just like you, but it's not you. <laughs> like, fuck, yeah. bro. Do you know who Tom Savini is? Uh-uh. Tom Savini is like a horror icon. He's made a ton of like really famous horror films. He's super famous, legendary like makeup and effects artist. Oh, yeah. He's the one that designed Corey Taylor's mask that I was making fun of, and even he was talking about it in interviews he was saying yeah i've seen that meme and i think it's kind of funny like he he even brought it up so that that really did go super viral Dude. but nobody knew who you know it was me um but yeah i'm hoping that like i can pull it off again and get like viral again do you stand up you with know? it I, yeah, I've thought about it, uh, but we need the have, joke's kind of gone. I love that one dude that fucking wears the, uh, it looks like the the Chainsaw Masker mask. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're talking about Derek Davidson. Dude, that he fucking does the love leather that face. Mask. That mask is so yeah. fucking badass. His character is, is I think it's hilarious. Uh, it's an acquired taste for some people, but yeah. I think it's funny that some guy is going up there in a leather face mask and like saying horrible crazy shit my wife thinks i should look like mankind she's like baby you kind of look like mankind oh nice do like a mankind thing because i've met mankind and i've I've kind of been a mick foley fan for a while but uh she's like uh you should definitely play into that you know since you met him and you know man it was so cool meeting him he came to sulfur springs one time and it was just oh it was so one of the coolest experiences i've ever had oh cool yeah i actually met him and you met mankind you're saying yeah i met mick foley the 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 guy that's pretty cool yeah it was really cool and this is me being a poor kid not really knowing anybody it was just really cool meeting a guy like that and him signing the book i had at the time and of course i don't know where the book's at i ended up losing it because i was a fucking delinquent but dude i'm telling you man (laughs) that's uh, awesome it was so cool it was it was uh i wish i could go back and find that fucking book did you ever meet any of like the big like did you ever meet any of the guys that you looked up to uh yeah man uh that was the craziest thing about touring and like getting signed yeah. is like i was rubbing elbows with all my heroes like yeah. my band was on tour with a ton of bands that i grew up worshiping any of them I, where you're like crazy. damn he's different in person yeah i wish i they always say don't meet your heroes yeah 1000 percent true dude yeah 1000 percent true actually as a matter of fact i'm literally there's some people that i've met i'm distraught over meeting them Really? Because I was such a huge fan and their music was such a huge part of my life. Now when I think about their music and I listen to it, all I think about is the crazy fucking lunatic I met that is an actual piece of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to like name you any names, name them. You but name. there was a several instances where like like for instance, I'm not going to name any names, but one day I woke up and my phone was blowing up. I yeah. had tons of texts and emails and messages from people, right? And I, I woke up and I'm like, "What the hell's going on?" Uh I'm being messaged by like tons of people. I woke up one day and one of my her- musical heroes who I had just been on tour with was like just talking shit about me in the me- in the media. Like there was articles posted where he was just like ranting about me. 
what the fuck? And I and I'm not even anybody to for somebody to do that to. You know what I mean? I'm not like some like I'm nobody. But uh, he was drunk and decided to get on social media and just start talking shit about me and my band. And so, like, all of a sudden, I'm in literal public dispute via the media with, with like, one of my heroes. Yeah. And um, that's sad. That sucks. It's, it's, it's it really sucks sad. because it's like, damn, dude, like, I looked up to you, man. It's like, you're, weird. you're part of the reason I'm doing this, man. Like, what yeah. the fuck, you know? And also, yeah. when you're a, a, a figure like that, like somebody, a hero type that people look up to you, like, it's easy to dismiss you as just a crazy fucking asshole, but those people have like issues, problems, yeah. drug, you know, drug like drugs, alcohol, like they're humans too. Yeah. But at the same time, like when you're in the public eye, you know, people are going to scrutinize your, did you ever action. dabble in drugs? Um, like I've, I've smoked weed pretty consistently my yeah. whole life since I was a teen. Yeah. But I've experimented with shit here and there, but I've never been like hooked on anything. Yeah. Like I've never been a cokehead or done heroin or smoked meth. Yeah. Uh, I've tried coke. I've tried mushrooms. I've tried stuff like, yeah. especially in college, I was trying some stuff, experimenting. It's just never really been me. I've never had an alcohol problem. Like I drink, I get, you know, I get yeah. fucked up. I, I party. But when but, you're here at the house, do you have a beer? Like, or you no, just, you just I don't ever chill. drink when I'm by myself. You're, you're a social drinker. I'm a social drinker, yeah. especially at shows. When yeah. I do comedy shows, I, I get lit and I spend too much money. Last night, last night after the open mic, I was buying everybody drinks. And like, I always wake up the next day and I'm like, oh God, I fucking spent like $200 or so, you know, I'm one of those, but I get real, I get real nice and friendly when yeah. I, when I get uh, loaded and I just start like, um, you know, partying with people, you know, you know, you know, one thing I regret, I You're make a party guy. I make a lot of promises whenever I'm, uh, you're drinking like i'm hanging out with comedians uh after the show and i'm always like yeah dude i'm gonna get you on a show like i'm just i don't know i do that too much sometimes but yeah it's part of it though. it's whatever it's part of the process you know yeah totally yeah i'm the same way that's why i leave what i'm the same way once i get oh to drinking, i get you once yeah. i'm once i get to drinking i'm a social butterfly oh, God. hey what's up guys how y'all doing what's up like i'm just like uh, it's just i'm uh, i get annoyed with myself i might as I'm well like, be handing out money at that yeah, point i just yeah. start like going crazy yeah, so what about I, you did you ever like were you ever hardcore on anything? Uh, i've done all of it you've done all of it i'm just about the only drug i haven't done is uh fentanyl fentanyl Ooh, man, and uh there's a few pills i haven't done you know everybody there's always them different types of pills but i've snorted i've snorted at almost every drug i've snorted weed i've snorted not weed but i've, I've snorted, snorted weed dude <laughs> <laughs> i snorted heroin snorted a uh, crack uh meth wow. i smoked meth um and snorted meth um crack i smoked crack and i uh, snorted it too and then I've, wow yeah i smoked cocaine um, out of smoke blunt, cocaine and yeah, blunts. Oh, you mix it with your weed. Oh, I, oh, I yeah. have actually done that. Yeah, I think like pre, where they, they call it primo. Blunt. Yeah, primo. Yeah, I've yeah, done that. Yeah. Yeah. I really didn't do anything, dude. I, anything. I after I that's the first time I did coke is I smoked a primo blunt. I was like, man, fuck the weed. Just give me the coke. Oh dude, wow, coke is the drug that could like I had to stay away from. Yeah, because it was that one that that's the one that takes me down that rabbit hole. You it, know what I mean? When you do coke. You instantly start getting that Gollum voice in your head that's like, you need more. Do it more. I yeah, need that. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, Coke's bad. You know, you, you want me to tell you something that's scary, though? That I get the same rush I got from Coke I get on the stage. Okay, well, that's that's good. It's good and scary. Because it's good you because... snort the stage. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I got you. Yeah. But but I, it's like that that's rush, true. that rush I got when that's I true. would do coke. I get that on stage, and yeah, that's man. that's how that's why I'm like addicted to like I'm like I love the comedy man because I'm like I, I love the I love I just love being on stage and I love trying to make people laugh. It's just man, it's so fun. It's so fun. It's weird. I like to, but I, I do compare. I do compare the cocaine have the cocaine feeling I got mm. to being on stage for me. So it's it's weird. It's a weird. I know it's kind of has a weird analogy. And I, not really. Like I said I really, I, get it. I really enjoyed Coke. I get it. <laughs> I think I'm. I I am yeah. very much as much as I maybe don't want to admit it. Sometimes I am very much a broken. I've always been kind of a broken person and a broken soul. Um, there there's a lot of things in in me that are like really kind of like you got a lot of rage. Dark. Not rage. No, no rage. not rage. It's more sadness. Yeah. 
I, I have a lot of issues and I'm a very broken person. I always have been. And I, and I'm seeking accept. I'm one of those people that has like a hole that I, I'm trying to fill a void. I want mm. people to like me. I yeah. want acceptance. Yeah. I'm very much that type of sad artist brain type of person. Very much so way more than people know. So I think that's my main motivation for yeah. doing what I do. Comedy and stuff is bring people together. Um, but, um, the way you are describing your motivation for doing it, um, do you have any of that stuff going on? Do you have do you do you have any kind of like because uh, a lot of comedians are like broken people that are like yeah. seeking? Do you have any of that at all, or are you just more? Uh, I do. I th I, I'm broken for sure. After I lost my mom, it really fucked me up. Uh, I see. It really. Uh, I lost my best friend. You know, in wow. a sense, because uh, I would talk to her about everything. She yeah. knew me like nobody else knows me. The only person that knows me closer than my now closest yeah. in my life is my wife now. My wife now, she is probably the closest person I have. This besides my mother when, you know, she was alive. But Wow. Yeah, it was, man. How long ago was that? 2019. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. And I st I'm still not over it. <laughs> <laughs> you never get over it man you never get over losing a, f a loved one i feel like yeah especially if they're close if they're close in your life and i, I feel like it, it doesn't just have like i said that's why i said loved one because it doesn't have to right. be a parent some people don't have you know both parents in their life and you know maybe it be maybe it's a best friend maybe it's a fucking pet man i I got two cats, and I love those fucking cats. They, I, they, they're like my kids, but they get on my fucking nerves. You know, it's the same. It's the same relationship. That I mean, I, yeah. I lost my ring here recently. My cat. They. We have a mouse in the house. That that I guess I don't know. I guess because it's cold outside, he he found his way inside. Oh no! And uh, but we're, we're trying to get rid of him. Um, he's a smart mouse. I set a trap and I I put peanut butter on the trap, you know, to catch him. And he set off the trap, ate the peanut butter. Oh wow! Smart fucking mouse. I want to catch him alive so I can. Or just him lucky, but yeah, no, I, I want to catch him alive and and, and train him. I thought about training a mouse. Imagine if I pulled up a mouse and he's doing stand and I'm doing stand up and I got a mouse on oh front my of my God. stage doing fucking deals. Like you ever seen the Green Mile? Yes, dude. Imagine having a mouse like totally. that, dude. That's trained. I love the Green Mile, dude. Yeah, imagine. Yeah, imagine. Dude, you'd, you'd I wonder fucking, if anyone's ever done. You would that. blow the fuck up. Man. I'm gonna look that up and see if anyone's ever I'm done. Telling you, getting with. getting you a fucking animal to help you, dude. Dude, when I was out in L.A., uh, this comic would go on stage with like a robot. Ooh. And uh, the robot was doing stand up. It was so weird. That's creepy. But imagine having yeah, like a pet or an animal. You know, uh, like Whitney comes. Whitney come and she does that with her with her. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, she'll wow. have her like because you know she has one of them them sex robots or whatever. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, dude. Crazy. Whitney Cummins, dude. She's fucking dude. I love her, man. She's so funny. Well. I don't do puppets or pets, <laughs> but I might be doing the the gimmicky uh, music thing. Dude, Some I people hate you, that. I think you knew it, man. At that comedy festival I was at. Yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I've always been aware of people that do shticks gimmicks, yeah. um, like with comedy, uh, especially music. Like I am a fan of music comedy for sure. But when I was at that festival in, in fucking Paris, Texas, a guy that is uh, from Saturday Night Live. Uh, I didn't know he was going to be there, but he just goes up on stage with a guitar and starts singing and doing crowd work with his guitar. It was amazing. Yeah. And I loved it. And uh, also this guy, Michael Henry, that's been doing the open. Shout out to lately. Michael yeah. Henry. Hen yeah. He's been killing it with his raps and stuff. Yeah. Those two things kind of pushed me over their edge to where like, I'm like, you know what? I have to do this now. Dude. You I think it's part of my life. You know, I, I was sitting there cause you Story. know, I'm a, I'm a huge, I'm a huge observer. I've all, I'm very observant. I've always been that way, but I was sitting there while I was watching Michael Henry perform and I was sitting there just in the moment. I looked over at you and I saw it. I was like, dude, Fucking Noah I love that shit. It. Noah loves it. I, I love it. it. I could tell. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I'm really I, I fuck, He fucks that. with it. And I was like, I fuck with it. I said, man, we, we're on to something. There's, we're on to something here. Yeah. DFW is on to something. Something is happening in Reno's <laughs> live. Reno's live. There's something. There's some magic yeah. happening there, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you. Just You need to come out April 1st. April 1st. April 1st. Fucking come out to this damn show because there yeah, is so much magic happening right now. And it's weird how it's all coming together. Yeah. It's weird how it's all coming together like at the perfect time. 
So your very first book show that you're ever going to do is March 17th. March 17th. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, whenever I told, whenever I first told you that I wanted you to do this show, yeah, um, and you said like I really needed that and stuff like that, I didn't realize that that was your first book show, yeah. but now I see why. Because yeah. like when you do land your first like booked gig, it really does push you. Yeah. To like work on your shit and like get good and like it gives you a goal and a so that's awesome. I'm glad I was able to do that, yeah. man. Yeah, it's definitely a test. Like March seventeenth is a big test for me and then April first is the fucking that to me that's my final written. Like to yeah. me that's my that's my because there's so many comedians that are gonna be booked. I want to stand out amongst all of them. Sure. Yeah, I think I think we sure. all want to stand out, you know, but Just try not I to put too much pressure know, on yourself. Because that over fucks it up. I know. Just be just be Tony Cruz yeah. and do what you've been doing yeah. and you'll be fine. Don't try to like, you know, don't, put, but I understand the pressure thing. Like yeah. my first gig, book gig, I was, uh, you know, terrified, but, um, you know what? My first booked gig ever might be the comedy store. It really? might actually be like where I actually got my start. That's badass. You know what I'm saying? Cause I did a bunch of open mics and then I did that. Like I, I, Maybe, maybe that's a lie. Maybe that was the second one because I did book my own. I booked my own gig uh, where I had metal bands and then comedy happened. Yeah, but the comedy but, like, store. That was my first. Let's, like, let's, actually, dude, let's stick with that know. one. Yeah, dude. let's stick, let's with, stick with comedy store. Yeah, that's dude. where I got my start first show ever. No, that is dope, dude. That but is no, that's badass. cool. So your first one's March 17th, St. Yeah. Patrick's Day. And then your second show ever is going to be April 1st? Yeah. Nice, dude. Yeah. So, you went, so you're going from a book show to doing a comedy fest. Yeah. But see, you're going to be able to use uh that stuff experience to get you um because like when you tell when you show bookers uh what you've done and you show them those flyers and they, hey look my look at my face on this fest yeah. you know what i'm saying that's why i did that that's why i made everybody their own individual flyer so that you can use that to like get booked you know what i'm saying yeah because yeah. if you sent that to me i'd be like oh shit this guy's legit i'm gonna book him yeah. you know well none of that with the podcast too i'm hoping that they see, totally you know because that was one thing that you're setting was, yourself up for. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really adamant about having multiple avenues of, you know, of ways to to come about this approach. You know, have different approaches to the game. Yeah, and I feel like comedy and podcasting is they go hand in hand. Yeah, not for everybody. You have to have the personality for it. Obviously, mm -hmm. you got to be able to have a conversation and and be gen and have an honest conversation and not try to you know. It, it, that's one thing me I've always been good at. I'm good at fucking listening and I'm good at talking and having good conversations with people because I don't lie. I don't have no reason to lie about shit. Yeah, I don't have no reason to sit here and feed you, tell you bullshit. Or a lot of people I notice when they try to do a podcast, they're they'll have a guest on and they don't even let the guest fucking talk. The whole time True. they're just talking like, dude, true. It's not about you. At the, when you're having a podcast, it's about the person you're talking to, or it's about the conversation. Yeah. It's about both of you. It's not just about you. And that's yeah. if you're going to just do that, just stick to comedy. You know, don't don't do the podcast. Okay, can I give you a compliment? Yeah, go ahead. All right, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right. So uh, I didn't really know how this podcast was going to go. To yeah. be honest, I because I I like me and you have done a. Uh, some open mics together we've hung out and stuff but i didn't i don't really know you that well yeah so like this could have been complete dog shit you yeah. know but i will say you are you are good at this I, I think you should keep it up like you're you are a good conversationalist you're a good interviewer this this wasn't dog shit it was actually really good i enjoyed Thank you. it Thank i think you. you should stick with it it's cash shit instead <laughs> it's, I got two it's, cats, yeah. it's cash shit no, but no, I think you're, I think you're good at it. And also doing this is helping, it's going to help your stand up. Yeah. Cause you're getting better at talking. You're getting better at, you know, everything. Well, all that, and when me and you laugh, I mean, yeah, yeah, you yeah. say something funny, you can go back and listen and be like, I got a bit there. I can, I can take this and I can make a bit out of it. I've made, there's been times I've had conversations on, on, on my podcast Yeah. and I've gone back and I was like, me and this guy, I said something funny there. We were both talking and I, I only use it if I say it now, if, now if the other person says it, if they're not a comedian, like if I had, like I had one with a rapper yeah. and he's not a comedian, I was like, I can use that because you know, we both we're talking he's not a comedian he's never gonna say it I, yeah. so i did it but like let's say me and you for example we release this you say some funny stuff you got me over here crackling use that man yeah go back and look at it go back and see if you can i see joe joe rogan there's a lot of comedians that do that they use their yeah they, they totally. get they use the they oh man i said this funny on a podcast well i might got something here i might have something i can i can work off of. well th this podcast in particular we didn't really like i we haven't really 
been trying to be that funny. Like it's been kind of like a serious talk, which I think is really cool too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I would like to, um, I would like to do more podcasts and like, like maybe try to do like more of the comedy aspect. This has kind of been like an interview, chill, get to know each other, talk about our past and what yeah, we've done. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it's been one of those. But when I listen to podcasts, I enjoy b both of those equal. Yeah, like yeah. some of the Joe Rogan podcasts are like with a scientist dude. Oh hell, not even talking about Joe or, Rogan. Let's know. talk about local guys like. Uh, the gypsy and hippie uh radio man oh, yeah they're, they're fucking funny them dudes right there they're hilarious you, I, you're I talking can, about uh dante and uh Bazzini. yeah dante Bazzini and, and munchies and, yeah shout out to them two guys man they're fucking hilarious them dudes I can, that's awesome i listen to them and i'm just like dude they're oh, i cool. listen to some of their stories i didn't know munchies lived right down the road from me he lived he used to live in greenville and he you know he talked about how the cops in small towns are dicks and i was like fuck yes they are dicks fucking thank god somebody's saying it Cops in small towns don't give a fuck about nobody. They're just out there trying to get their quota. Because, you know, they got a monthly quota they got to hit. Yeah. You know, that's all they're giving a fuck. They don't do that. I knew a guy in Sulphur Springs that would put, that pulled over his own mother and gave her a ticket. Oh, wow. I'm not making this shit up. Dude, small town cops are <laughs> dicks, man. They are dicks in small towns. My brother's not a cop. Not Sulphur Springs, though. Not Sulphur Springs. I'm good with the police there. We're good. When uh, Sulphur Springs police are awesome. Remember how? Yeah, uh, yeah. You're, you, I need to backtrack for a second. Yeah, By know. the way, I love Sulphur Springs. Sulphur Springs is great. Don't I, kill me. I told you I got three brothers. Uh, two of them uh, are cops. Oh no shit! One of them's a state trooper. One of them's a uh, yeah. So why didn't you become a cop, man? It I know, sounds right? like the it's black sheep, the, dude. Yeah, yeah. What the hell, dude? We got we got cops and uh, you know, and then a comedian guy, uh, musician, <laughs> dude, uh, comedian pothead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really so much of a pothead anymore, but dude, yeah. I used to be. Yeah, I used to be. Sorry, mom. Uh, by the way, but yeah, I was a big pothead, and uh, but these days I I have like a Delta Eight vape. But, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, we've we've smoked it, but yeah, I've, I've Delta Eight will get you high. Yeah. People say it won't, but it does. It does. <laughs> I, I enjoy it. I enjoyed it for sure. So, um, how long we've we been going now? We've two? been going two hours and fifteen minutes. You about ready to wrap it up? I guess so. Yeah, this seems like a good uh, ending point. We we've, right, we've talked right. about a lot of cool shit, we man. We did. We I, did. Well, I'm glad uh, we did this. Uh, me too. But no, like, before seriously. before I let you go, before I end it with you, I got to get one more thing out there. Let everybody know on Instagram, all your social media platforms that they can reach you at. Uh oh. Well, if you're lazy like me, you can just Google Noah Shark robertson Google. and you're gonna find everything you need to know but first of all i got a website noah shark robertson.com mm -hmm. uh, i have swimming with sh sw <laughs> i can't talk uh i have swimming with sharks entertainment.com where you can uh find all that a comedy booking and like all the booking stuff i do yeah. uh there's a swimming with sharks entertainment uh youtube page that's starting to grow. Um, we just hit like five or six uh, thousand subscribers, Hell which yeah. I'm happy about. Um, you know, it's not millions, but you know, when, when you hit your first few thousand, it's pretty cool. Um, you can look up, you know, Noah Shark Robertson on Facebook. Uh, I'm Noah Shark Robertson on Instagram. I've got a TikTok. Um, I've got Twitter. But yeah, if you if you Google me, you can find me. You can find all my stuff, and it's out there. I, I'm a I'm a little bit of a social media whore, but I post like I've always done. Even before I was do an actual stand up, I've always posted like silly, dumb videos that I've made, sketches. Yeah. Um. But these days, I'm trying to do more. I'm just trying to do more of everything. You yeah. know, I got videos out there. I got uh, you know, you can find clips of my stand up. I got a bunch of random uh, stuff out there. Where, where can we come see you? Uh, what's your next shows? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, if I can remember them all. I'm uh, going to pull them up real quick. Uh, I got a Dallas Comedy Club. Uh, so there's a there's a chick uh, named Kinsey Ford that produces shows at Dallas Comedy Club. Okay. She just asked me to do Dallas Comedy Club. She has a ru ru comedy roulette show okay. where we spin a wheel and like you have to do whatever random topic it lands on. That's cool. Which is pretty cool. Um, that roulette show is like March 9th. Nice. March 8th, March 9th. But yeah, look up Kinsey Ford and her roulette show. Um, I'm going to be at Dallas Comedy Club like the first week of March. And then every third Sunday, I have a showcase at Dallas Comedy Club. We just did our, our first one back after the, you know, me laying low for a while. Yeah. We just did our first one uh, February 19th with Mitch Burrow. The next one is going to be April 19th, Sunday. I got Adam Lucky 
from Ooh. Austin, Texas, coming Ooh. to headline. He is hilarious. Hell yeah. He's really good. Um, so, yeah, every third Sunday at Dallas Comedy Club. Um, what's the other? I, I got an important one. March. Uh, March 17th, I know you got a big one coming out with uh, with uh, uh, St. Patty's Day. The St. Patrick's Day, March yeah. 17th, is the Zach Sprung Comedy Jam. Yeah. And uh, I'm, we're flying in a guy, or he's flying in from L.A. His name's uh, the the heavy metal dad comic, Mike yeah. McFarland. He's going to headline that. And uh, we're going to do a tribute to Zach Sprung. we got the April 1st Comedy Fest uh, coming up. I'm doing the Addison Improv. Oh, you know what? I, I got the dates mixed up. March 9th is actually uh, Addison Improv, the Addison Marvel Improv, show. Yeah. yeah, look up Josh Stromiello and the Marvel Marvel comic show, Marvelous Night of Comedy. What character do you You play Venom, right? I'm Venom, dude. Venom. Yeah, the mask is right there, the Venom mask. Fuck yeah. Uh, I've always been a huge Venom fan. Like, sitting right behind me is a ton, a big stack of Venom <laughs> comics. So yeah, to yeah. be able to play that character as a comedian That's is awesome. pretty pretty dope yeah but it but anyway I, I can't remember all my dates but they're all on noah shark robertson.com usually or or swimming with sharks entertainment.com and yeah. um and guys y'all come out april 1st and support this call yeah man Fest. we're gonna make it we're gonna something beautiful is happening in dfw it's gonna be cool i would like yeah. to make it a yearly thing yeah and um grow it and have more venues next time and like i want to do instead of just straight comedy i want to have little um segments of the fest where like for an hour it's going to be roast battles yeah. and then for this hour it's like you know people are drawing topics out of the, the briefcase yeah. or like you know just have a bunch of like random crazy stuff going on um me and mitch burrow just pitched a show to dallas comedy club and they sh they've, they're showing interest we're going to do a show called carbon copy and you're going to go out there and you're going to do uh, your own material but then you're gonna go backstage and come back out as a different com as one of the other comedians, and you're yeah. gonna so like let's make let's say me and you are doing the carby copy show. Mm -hmm. I'll come out dressed as you, and I'll do your joke, <laughs> and then you'll come out dressed as me, and you'll do my joke. I like it. You know what I mean? I like it. And Mitch was saying that it, it's because then you kind of kind of you got you you also got to see what other people how they see. I know, right? Yeah, yeah like, that's cool. That is cool. I like that. That's a really cool premise. It seems like a cool idea, but yeah. also if you start messing up. It makes it even funnier because, yeah. like, you, it's hard to remember their material, and you're just like, kind of like, not. It's hard to do somebody else's material, so <laughs> that'll be interesting. But yeah, yeah we got yeah. a ton of shit going on, man. I just want to keep getting better and building, working on my craft, writing jokes. Um, I'm gonna start a podcast soon. As, you know what? You're. I, I will always. If my podcast ever blows up one day, you know, I will always give you credit for like maybe being the final. Um, nail in the coffin Hell for me yeah. i mean i've ordered the shit yeah like all my podcast equipment is sitting in a box over there but after doing this with you it like made me really want to do it now That's you know fine. what i mean because it was awesome. fun it was awesome and um it's not it's not like rocket science no. you, you're hitting you're hitting record and we're just bullshitting you we're know? talking like, yeah and then you go back and listen to it and edit what you want to edit and keep what you keep and and you know I, how, I like i like to not I, I try not to touch anything like when yeah I, when, before i send this like i said before i send this thing out i'm going to let you hear a draft copy and if there's anything you do want out we'll, we'll cut it out but i don't care yeah i really don't care but and uh, if you send me if you send a if you send it to me i'll make a video and i'll put it on my shit and i'll, I'll put links to your shit you okay. know like i'll yeah. try to help you get some followers it'll be like a collab yeah uh, sure. you know what sure. i mean i mean the audio is yours of course but you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah like i'll put the video on my shit and yeah. but you know you listen to a lot of podcasts so you know how it is even if you have zero listeners the fact that you're doing a podcast gives you clout in this yeah. industry you know yeah. like oh shit you do a podcast like people just automatically see you as like mm -hmm. legit mm -hmm. right yeah. so i think this will help help you how many have you done now i've done this is uh i think this episode will be like number 14 15 Oh, cool! I yeah. didn't know you did that many. I thought you yeah. only did a few. Yeah, I've had, I got ten published. Very nice. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'll I'll check out some of them too. I want to like hear Started your shit. My first one, uh, first one I um, published was January fourth. Who was on it? Bill King and Scott Lorenzo. Oh, nice. Then I had Theban. Bill King's awesome. Yeah, he's he's cool. And then I had Theban G, Theban Gaines. Oh, cool. I had him. Then I had Bill King and Theban. Then I had. Uh, Ryan Gerard, you know him. Oh yeah, yeah, and a few of them. Emma Logan, Bridget Tool, Ryan Gerard, uh, Stephen Newman. But those are call ins. But I've had a few people. Ryan yeah. Gerard's funny. He's just yeah. kind of depressy a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's kind of like the Eeyore of comedy in my mind. <laughs> he's like he's always pressing a 
posting like kind of depressy shit, but he's made, he's, he's a very a, funny he's guy. He's had a wild love. Yeah, he's had, yeah, he's that's what I'm saying. He's love, gone yeah. through a lot of crazy yeah. stuff and he's working it out and yeah. he's a funny guy. I like him. Yeah. I tr- I tried to get him to do the fest, but he didn't want to drive that far and blah blah blah. I but. understand. Yeah, I understand. He lives in That's cool, man. Yeah. It, it's been fun. I, I enjoyed it. It was really cool. Well, Noah Shark Robertson, I appreciate your time, man, and I appreciate you being a guest on my open mic and I can't wait to do this again. Hell yeah, here, I'll, I'll point the camera at you so you can close it out. There you go. Well, guys, uh, I'm just, it's just me, Tony Cruz over here doing my podcast. And uh, like I said, brother, I appreciate everything. Hell yeah, man. It's been awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Later.